Hello, hello. It's Big Cheds. I am coming to you to upload yet another one of these awesome conversations we have on Twitter, these Twitter spaces. I uploaded one yesterday. I actually have one more one to upload, and then maybe I'll do another one later this week. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and hit this play button. This one is just over two hours long. It was an awesome conversation, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening. Everybody, it's Big Chad. Just give me a few minutes to get the spaces up and running. All right, folks, I'm Big Chad's on Twitter. Thank you for joining here tonight. I just attached a tweet to the top here with some new information for you, tech books, video recommendations. Um, This is a conversation I want to hear from you. This is a recorded spaces. I will be um, uploading it to my YouTube later. So I'm going to go ahead and tweet it out as well just to get people kind of in on the conversation. Join my spaces. Let's talk BTC. And boom, I sent out the tweet. So it's Friday night. Um, Here's the format as usual. Um, We're just going to hang out, just me and you. If I have some guest speakers, that's great because they can they can help take the load off. I'm going to bring you up um, a few at a time. I'd like you to wait until I call you. Um, please wait patiently. I'll call you. I'll bring you on. Uh, make sure Twitter has access to your microphone. That'll, that'll make sure things go quicker. Already 300 people listening. There's only three people requesting to speak. That's not good enough. I want you, whoever is hearing my voice right now, hit that little microphone button and request to speak. I want to hear from you. Um, I did did one of these spaces yesterday. I got through everybody. So if you want to ask me a question, this is your opportunity. We can have a conversation. There's no question too dumb. Um, There's smart questions, and hopefully I'll rise to the occasion. But that's what we're doing. So I'm just watching this conversation fill up. Uh, we have a really nice grouping of people already. I'll start my spiel, and then we'll get this party started. As a reminder, I am Big Cheds on Twitter. You can find me on YouTube at Cheds Trading. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I think there's some great value there for you. The tutorials, um, these Twitter spaces, the, these conversations are uploaded there. The free version of my book. Trading Wisdom, Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. It's available on Amazon. It's done really well, uh, but you can get it for free on my YouTube channel as well. Um, And of course, Bitcoin Live, where I'm a founding analyst. I've been doing market updates there for four years. I'm part of a world-class team of analysts. You know, when you sign up, you get access to everything. So that's something you really want to consider if you're serious about learning how to trade. Uh, I'm drinking, I have a glass of Cabernet in my hand. It is Friday evening where I am. So that's uh, also the uh, the other warning is that I'm having a little bit of Cabernet. So you'll have to bear with me here tonight. So I'm going to bring the first group of people up into the conversation and we're going to go right through them. I don't know how long this conversation will go, but we're going to have fun. And again, please wait uh, until I call you. Uh, let's see who's going to go first. How about Serena? Serena, hold them or fold them. What's up? Serena, can you hear me, folks? You need to make sure Twitter has access to your microphone. I'll give you a little bit of time uh, to make sure that 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 works. Um, please let me mute and unmute you. If you keep um, unmuting yourself, I will remove you, as I just did to someone. Um, so, folks, please wait until I bring you in in the conversation. I call you. That will be your time. Please do not unmute yourself early. Serena's not ready. We're going to go over to Crypto Splinter. Crypto Splinter, what would you like to say? Hi, can you hear me? Sure, what's up? Hey, Chad, a uh, big fan of yours. Uh, yesterday I heard your uh, spaces. Uh, you talked about the 22,500 22, uh, confluence. Um, obviously, we broke that. I uh, just wanted to ask you, I mean, uh, how do you see the current state of market? And uh, if, I mean... That's it. Hold on one second. Six- I'm sorry. I just had to remove another person who was unmuting them. As I just said, folks, and sorry for interrupting, please do not unmute yourself. Wait until I call on you and it is your turn, and then I will unmute you. I've been battling people. I'm hitting mute. They're unmuting themselves. Please wait till it's your turn. I'm sorry about that, Crypto. What, what's going on? 
So um, you mentioned yesterday in your spaces about the 22,500 confluence. Um, yeah. That, that was a good, uh, you know, break or, or, or bounce. That was break. a big level. Yeah. It was a big level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we, we broke that, uh, went significantly lower. Um, after a 10% move, you would expect uh, a bounce around these levels, but uh, chart uh, isn't. Uh, it's uh, looking very good. I wanted to ask you uh, how, how you're seeing the current uh, you know, Bitcoin price action. It's brutal. Um, it's just a nasty candle. This is a big red Marabozu. You know, pretty much no wick, just all body, big red body. We're kind of dumping here uh, pretty viciously, um, you know, towards the candle close in about 40 minutes. I think the fact that we did not hold at 22.5, that's a big deal. If you look at the progression in this channel, we've talked about the formation of these higher lows and how important it is to maintain that higher low structure. Um, you know, ever since we had those outside bars, uh, you know, uh, five days ago, four or five days ago, we were on watch anticipating probably a push back towards those range lows, um, which was it really 22.5, which was where the DMA, a daily MA50 was. And the high of that candle from July 8th. So just a big level. It failed. That's now resistance. So if we get a bounce over the weekend, some type of a slow walk up to that 22K, 22.5K level, um, a lot of people are going to start shorting that level. So the chart is kind of broken right now. Um, you know, on the daily, the weekly, we still have a little time. Uh, it's Friday. We still have two days to, you know, reassess perhaps on the weekly. But it looks like that EMA 8 close in the weekly was a deviation which means that was another trap. So it just, it just doesn't look good. Um, you know, it can do a lot of things. It can kind of coast. It can drift back down towards 18K. It could drift up to 22.5 where I think people would be shorting. I think after this type of a volatile move, you, nobody really has an edge here. Nobody has an edge now. We had a lot of information like five days ago. Um, we had those outside bars and the up thrusts. Um, and all those upper shadows in this range, if, if you've been watching my candles, my uh, videos, or kind of listening to my spaces, you've seen that. Um, but now nobody had, really has an edge now because we just had this big move. Now we have to kind of let the market digest the move um, and see what comes from it. So that's what I would say, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you for stepping up tonight. Thank you so much. So just again, the, I want to go over the instructions because a few people had trouble with that already. I'm going to bring you up to speak. I'd like you to just do nothing and wait. I will mute you initially. You'll be muted. When it's your time, I'm going to call on you and you can go ahead and unmute yourself and speak. Please do not sit there and un unmute yourself. I've had a few people now where I've muted and they keep unmuting themselves. Um, you got to wait till it's your turn, folks. So. That's what we're going to do. I'm really happy that you're here in the conversation. I, I want to hear from you. You know, I don't want to listen to myself talking. I know what I think for the most part, but it's when I get interesting questions from you that forces me to think about things um, in unique ways or to communicate things uh, in unique ways. That's the value of this. Um, Juvenex, what's going on, Juvenex? What would you like to say? Hey, what's up, Chad? How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you doing over there? I'm doing great. Thank you. Happy Friday. Um, so yeah, the price action today on Bitcoin is a little bit scary. Um, yeah, so I've been, <laughs> I've been using the 200 MA. I've been yeah. keeping in my eye on that Please, and that me. weekly close. Nope. Sorry. I got to remove you again. That's another person who didn't listen. When I bring you up, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt folks. You need to wait until I call your name. I'm bringing up a few of you at a time. I don't know if it's Friday night and everyone's already drinking, but you know, usually people follow the instructions. It's not happening yet. So let's do a quick reset. I'm going to bring you up. I really want to hear from you, but please wait until I call you. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, man. Um, folks are usually a little bit more well behaved. What's going on, Juvenix? So, so the MA200. <laughs> no yeah, so the MA200. Um, so I like looking at the Bitstamp chart on TradingView, um, and it looks like Bitcoin has been following that 200 MA quite nicely. Um, so it looks like weekly. Weekly, or weekly, the yeah. weekly 200. Um, yeah. So it bounced off nice, nicely 2018 and then the March uh, 2020 crash. Yeah. And then the fact that we just got rejected at the 200 MA, I think yeah. that's like the biggest flag. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like flashing red right there. And I was wondering, like, how critical or how, like, do you think that has like a very big impact? And do you think that's just going to bring us down to like 10 or 13 K? Cause that's sort of what listened, I'm thinking have now. Have you listened to my spaces before or, or seen any of my YouTube stuff? 
Oh, yes, yes. I follow a lot of your stuff. I haven't, not too much of like your videos on YouTube, but um, yeah. I well, follow a lot of your stuff. So check out YouTube. I think you really like it. So yeah, I've been actually talking a lot about the MA200. I've been talking about how people just assume because Bitcoin did, you know, a certain things in the last 12 years, then, then it's going to do it again for the next 12 years. Um, yeah. But what are we looking at now? We now broke below a prior all-time high for the first time. Um, and now we have the deepest price penetration of the weekly 200 in history. We just spent like five or six weeks below it. We've never done that before. And we've never really mm -hmm. done it this deep below it. I use the um, index on TradingView, which averages the exchanges rather than just one. I used to use just like single exchanges, but then you have these weird events where there's like inconsistencies in certain different prices. Sometimes there's slippage. And you get weird candle wicks. So I just use the index. Yeah. But it's the same concept. So yes, the fact that we are now looking to potentially lose the weekly 200 is a big problem. Yeah. Um, we look to have recaptured it here in the last couple of weeks. We look to have flipped the weekly EMA 8. That weekly EMA 8 was also kind of a price cluster of resistance with the 200 and the 8. We broke it for a week and now we're back below it, looking like we're going to do what we did at the end of March with the false breakout. So it's a big problem. Um, you know, any bull, any bull thesis is in major trouble, um, you know, below the weekly 200. Um, yeah. You know, but so but, you know, step by step right now, we have a we have a breakdown in the daily chart. Um, I think it's reasonable to anticipate a, a, a retest of at least like the mid 18K level. Um, and yeah, then I think kind of go from there. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think what is interesting is that a lot of, well, at least the out BTC pairs that I have on my list are green, like AVAX BTC, um, Phantom BTC, ETH, ETH BTC is it's not doing too terrible, but I um, wanted to get like your thoughts on that. Like, does that mean that? I don't look at BTC pairs. I don't look at BTC pairs. Like, it's too many variables, you know, because like it can go up or down depending on what Bitcoin is doing. I look at the Bitcoin chart. Then I'll go look at like Seoul USD. I'll never look at Seoul BTC because I already know what the Bitcoin chart is. I know exactly mm -hmm. where the Bitcoin chart is in the daily in relation to like the EMA 34 or relation to the Bollinger Bands or especially the MA 200. So when I go look at another altcoin, I can just see if it's stronger or weaker. Right. I don't it. like trading BTC pairs because that's too many variables for me. Right. The numerator and the denominator can change. Like, what is that? So I just mm -hmm. trade USD pairs. And in terms of like, relative strength like strength to btc you know i look what btc is doing you know eth has been leading the way that's why the eth btc pair has been outperforming that's cooled off a little bit because etc hit 2k now things are kind of cooling off um it's unpredictable how the rest of the market will will react when bitcoin dumps because sometimes like dominance will go up uh or down depending when like bitcoin can be dumping and sometimes dominance will go down because you know, ultra dumping less or sometimes they, they dump more. I don't really like that's why I don't like to look at that stuff. I just look at the, the USD pairs because that's what I'm trading. And I have in mind what the Bitcoin chart is doing. And that's the kind of the method that works for me. Um, yes. I don't like AVAX. That's a weak chart. Yes. I would, I would, okay. I'm not playing. I'm not playing altcoins below the week. The uh, MA 200 daily. There's only a few. Oh, yeah. That like totally makes CHD, sense. Right? Yeah. You're playing CHD right now. Right. That's like one of the best charts. TRB is one of the best charts. Uni was pretty good until it just collapsed. Uni was decent. You know, BNB had a beautiful run, but it just rejected at the 200. So uh, Ethereum Classic, that's one of the better ones. But I'm not playing these like bottoming, like used to be good charts like Sol or AVAX. Those are those are downtrends. Those are, I'm yeah. not playing downtrends. I'm not trying to guess a reversal. I want to play a continuation. Yeah, especially underneath that 200 MA. I agree. Well, that's it. thank you Use so much, Dan. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I think your 13K call is a little bit more realistic now uh, yeah. so keep up the good work I, I appreciate everything that you do and uh your calls are always amazing and always on point well you're nice to say that and um to thank me just go subscribe to my youtube all right yep for sure all right thank you, bro. so listen i want to i want to hear you folks please hit subs um hit subscribe please hit request wherever you are in the world whatever you're doing i just had dinner maybe you're having breakfast it's a worldwide thing i want to hear from you 600 people here now live only 20 people 15 people wanting to speak i usually get through everyone if you have a question hit that little microphone button i'm going to get to you just please wait until i call you don't unmute yourself let me handle all that wait until it's your turn and we'll get to you so we have elias elias um, hey hey yo. ted's hi how are you i'm doing pretty good um, good good I'm doing good happy man friday. what's up with you happy friday happy day yep yep 
Uh, hey, well, this is my one. Of, this is my first time joining one of these spaces. Um, so this is more so maybe a, a general crypto question. Yo. Um, I've been kind of tuning out the market in general uh, during this bit of a bear market. Um, but I was just curious um, if how do you recommend uh, kind of researching altcoins during this time? Um, just research. Because- I don't like the word research. Okay. Research implies like there's actually something like like you're you're looking for value. No, there's just price action. There's a there's a trend that you're either going to try to trade with it or against it if you want to lose your money. Right? You have all coins that trade in active markets with varying degrees of liquidity and varying degrees of relative strength. And you want to just play the strongest altcoins and wait for them to give you a setup. Don't research anything. These are all nonsense. They're all vehicles for speculation. These aren't like you're not looking for Microsoft here. Like let's the word research, like what are we researching? You know what but I mean? But how about in, in terms of like a long-term hold? Like there's no, none of that. Why? What? Do you, long, why are you long-term hold? What are you talking about? Like these uh, aren't these aren't long-term hold. None of them are. Maybe Bitcoin is. Probably Bitcoin. These aren't long-term holds. You're lucky if this thing still has juice, you know, in multiple cycles, right? If you look at the older coins, they have a um less of a rate of return every uh, like bull cycle. It's the new coins that do the best. They're long-term, I'm telling you, these aren't companies. These are things their VCs got in at, at a fraction of a penny. By the time you're seeing it, it's like $2, like long-term. So look, you got it's just price action and you have to hopefully be able to take advantage of an uptrend that just dipped and is testing major support level. And you can buy it there knowing that if it doesn't hold in that area, you can get out quickly and not really lose too much skin in the game, but you still had a good trading idea. Like long-term, I mean, like who knows, right? I mean, like even like, take these like DeFi coins, like the regulatory framework is changing drastically. Yeah. Who knows if any of these things are going to be viable? So look, if you want to find, there's other spaces with people who are smarter than me in that area and they can tell you what to go like quote unquote research. But when I hear that word, my bat, my bullshit meter, you know, goes to a ten. Yeah, but it's just my approach, and so I'm be I'm honest and I'm being raw, and I'm just telling you exactly what I think, and it's just what's right for me. So hopefully that that is of maybe you know you, there's a different path that works for you, and I, I hope you find it. So so you so you recommend any type of long term hold would be only in Bitcoin or Ethereum. I think Ethereum is reasonable, okay. um, but there's concerns over what's going to happen with the merge and if there's going to be some type of a regulatory capture of 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 Ethereum of the chain um, and like if it's going to be too centralized or not, I don't know. But I mean, if you're going to hold anything, those, those two are pretty solid. You know, gotcha. I say that as someone who holds both for long-term. Gotcha. I just well, appreciate your input. Definitely. Thank you, dude. Thanks for stepping up. Um, of course. That was a great topic. Great question. Good to see you. Yep. You too. All right, let's move on. You're going to get, I'm not here to, I'm not going to like, I'm just going to be honest with you. Life's too short for that. I'm, go to your discord room. If you want to have someone tell you what you already think, what's up, Bravo. It's your turn. Bravo, are you there? Bravo. If not, I'm going to bring someone else up in too. What's up, Bravo? Hey, Shad. How are you doing? Pretty good. What's up with you today? Hi, everybody. Uh, so the question, like, you, the thing is, like, it's, are we in, like, basically the, the thing is, like, we have, because of the microeconomic crisis that we have right now, was this rally was, like, just because it was it as a, just a relief rally or it's like because the trend is bearish so why yeah. if you're not like for someone who is not a day trader yes are they supposed to invest in this kind of time or no like if you're like don't consider yourself a day trader yep. you're like kind of scalping or... so you're trading in the weekly chart right if you're not a day trader you're a week trader exactly so listen, um, look, what is the trend? The primary trend is bullish in Bitcoin. The long-term trend is bullish still because in classical charting, the trend is the 200 moving average. The 200 is still rising on, on Bitcoin weekly. But we have a secondary or corrective trend we began in November, which is the bear trend. That's the, like, the trend that currently has the power, but that's that smaller trend inside the larger trend. So you have to understand kind of the fractal nature of trends. Now, in this bear trend... We've had relief rallies. Most of them have stalled at the daily EMA 34. But back in February, we had a really strong relief rally, and we bounced all the way to 45, 46K. And we attempted to break out and and resume the primary uptrend, and we got rejected at the MA 200. 
All right, what are we doing right now? We just had a vicious relief rally from 17K to 25K. Beautiful, beautiful move, stair-stepping move with a series of higher lows, moving average recapture on the daily and even on the weekly. And then we couldn't hold it. So there it is. We had a beautiful relief rally that pretty much just ended. And now, you know, we're looking at likely, you know, retest of, of lower support. Um, you know, the chart is breaking like as we speak, basically. That relief rally is kind of ending as we speak. So hopefully that answers your question. So the question, like basically the thing is like, let's say someone asked me, look, is it a good time to invest in Bitcoin right now? So invest? my personal opinion is like, you know, right now, because... Because the way this, I mean, the situation we have, like, look look at the inflation, recession, and uh, house prices are going down, all of these things. So if you think of all of those things are going around, so I think it's, it would be much safer to tell someone, no, don't buy Bitcoin right now. You can buy But none of that stuff has anything to do with the chart. Like, those are all words, you know? I'm talking about, look, what's the price of Bitcoin in relation to its weekly MA200? That's important. You can tell if some, as long as the price is above the 200, I think it's reasonable to buy it right now. I'd be careful, but I wouldn't start like when you start to think about stuff outside the chart, the fed, the housing data. Now, now you're making things too complicated. Just focus on what the price is doing. Um, and that should define whether or not you're willing to apply risk, um, or remove risk, right? That's the trend. The price filters out everything. Um, but that's a great topic. It's great to have you Dgen, uh, Dgen moons. What's cracking? Cheds. Hey man, um, you got you got the mighty loaded up with your cabernet or what? How did you know? Uh, we chatted before. Oh, I literally have the mighty. Yeah, I do and respect. the cabernet. Hell yeah, my okay. man. <laughs> so you know how you know how we get there. How we doing? Yeah, I don't know how we do. No, I'm doing really well actually. I I just want to say everyone in the audience, um, this man is has an what he's done is amazing. The way he set up his educational uh system here between his book his youtube and everything so you could literally get up to speed but what he's done just within the last year i forget how many months but these spaces are critical because you could get fine-tuned like just conversational advice and it gets into the nuance as the market's happening so just got to shout you out for that Chase. thank you I, um, they're super fun these are super fun you never yeah. know what you're gonna get it's like a box right. of chocolates exactly and it's it's super helpful just for me personally it just it's an added component because from the last time we spoke i was you know i'm playing eth um i'm I'm not really messing with bitcoin here this is too big of a size for me but i'm playing eth and just taking your advice along the way and like making the mistakes and getting burned and then fine-tuning but after that time we that last time we talked um, I'm sitting there. I'm out. I got out at sixteen fifty on ETH, and and I'm like, okay, you know, on a just, short. You mean on a short? Uh, no, I, I I was long. I was long, and I, I just from? got out because I I from? thought we were gonna. Um, I was long from like, where was I? I got out sixteen fifty. I got in at like twelve something. That's good. Like so you did really well. So it was, yeah. Right, that break there out of that channel it was so clean on yeah. as after it bottomed, and then it started. Oh, running. it was so, so I, good. I knew, so good right so then i got out thinking okay let me get out i'm gonna buy back like you're saying stair stepping up and then yeah. that cpi numbers came out and that shit just went up in a minute like it was insane but luckily i have all of my plan i have my journal i have all my shit worked out and my rules yep. and i i just didn't budge on that shit and i mm. let it go i let it go it was pushing up mm. to 2k and I'm looking, I'm like, okay, no. And I'm like, I'm watching it. And then the past few daily candles, it was just slipping, you know, a couple of high yeah. wicks there. Yep. Um, I'm looking at the 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 eight, um, which I always used to use the 10, but I really like the eight that yeah. you got in the mix. Exponential, yeah. Super helpful, yeah. You and see so the I candle on August 14th? Look at the daily uh, candle on August 14th. Let me look at it real quick. I had I had uh, Bitcoin up because you're talking about it. Um, August, which one? 14th, like six candles ago. Uh, where are we? So for those um, who are listening, right, that that was an outside bar. We just had four green candles and a big red outside bar. Outside yes. bar. It's, like, it's like if you're playing rock, paper, scissors with your friend and they throw out the rock and you have the paper, you wrap it right around. 
That's an outside bar wrapping right around that prior price action. It's a big time warning signal. We had a double outside bar in BTC. We had a, we had the single outside bar here in ETH right at 2K, big psychological level, right where the price paused back in the beginning of June. Um, so it was like a level that you'd look at, okay, maybe it fades here, and then boom, the outside bar. So there's some signs to be careful um, if you were paying attention. Yeah, and I got, I'm trying to explain this to my friends, and they're like, oh, the merge, the merge. Yeah. And uh, that yeah. guy of Elias that was there a minute ago, dude, Chez is right, man. This is all super speculative, and like, yeah. a lot of these things aren't going to work out. Like, there might be a bug in the code. You, you, there's so right. many variables. That's you it. Can't know. You know, I hate the word project. Is, oh, I hate the word research uh, and project. <laughs> like, what does that mean to yeah. me? That's roadmap. Not, you know, roadmap. But you look, there probably are there's better traders, there's better investors than me. That's cool. But like, it's just what I, you know, how I play it, you know. So my experience, you know, it's what, what's informed me. So um, great to have you up here, man. I want to move on. We have a great crowd. It's nice to hear from you. I'm glad you're doing well. Keep grinding and uh, talk to you later. Uh, huh? Thank you, sir. All right, that was great. I love these. Let's move on. We have 700 people. Um, we get a bunch of you up here. I have Big Chonus as well. He's hanging out. Doesn't, but you don't have to say anything. But if you want to jump in at any point, just hit that thing. You, you either raise your hand in real life because I'll see you, or hit the thing, um, you know, down the road if you want to respond to any of these questions. Uh, Professor Beast, what is up, Professor Beast? Hi, Chad. How are you? Good. What's up tonight? Yeah, just just very really specific. Really, just. I just wanted your your thoughts on it. It's just, it's a very specific one. I don't know if you answered the specific questions or not, uh, but I'm 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 long uh, and uh, on what on what uh, on on BTC and okay. I uh, you know I mean it's it's, it's a dumb, dumb thing to do, but I mean somehow it happened uh, and I I you know it was twenty two five hundred. Uh, I set the bids and uh, obviously we we broke down with the volume there, so I'm still long on from that one. So Why? in a loss. In, Why? In, sorry. Why? Yeah, that's you, that's a mistake. You, you just I, said you just presented an idea and then said, "Oh, my idea failed." I'm still here though. Like, what is that? Like, I don't understand. Like, you, there, you're no, there's no obligation to stick around with a bad idea. Like, you're never stuck. You're simply choosing to remain in a failed idea. And I, I know this because I've done it. We get so defeatist in ourselves where, okay, oh, okay. you know, my idea went bad, but I'll just hang around and see what happens. Like, what is that? So you think I should cut cut here and then re-enter wherever I think right? No, I think that in general, yeah, like, like don't stick around with a failed idea. Like you just presented to me. Like what was that story? Think about the story you just presented to me. I got in at twenty two five because I thought I was going to bounce. It yeah. didn't bounce, and I still hold on, held on. So what? Why? What is that? Like it's it's like you're not even listening to yourself. Like you have a plan. When the plan fails, you get out. Yeah, you, thank you. You get out. Nobody can nail every trade. Like. The, some, some most successful traders, 30, 40 percent of their trades are the ones they win. Mo you know, they lose more than half, but they manage the risk. They, they take a lot of small losses. Thank and you. And then the big winners will carry them. OK, thank you. I, I think I think I lost the uh, risk. Manage. I didn't um, manage the risk here. Define the risk before it defines you. OK. Yeah, fair enough. Fair point. So what's 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 will be your call in this situation? Close no, call, I, no call, brother. No call other than to tell you to. Try to find a way to feel in control. All right. I got to move on. It's great to have you tonight. Okay. All right, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I really try not to. I don't want to. When someone's in a trade, it's a little different. I'll, I'll give you an idea of like, but if you're not in a trade, what I think would be a good setup. But like, you know, when you're already in that spot, I'm going to move it on here. We have a great conversation on Big Cheds. We have Big Chonas on Twitter. I'd love to hear from Big Chonas because he's been act, um, quiet lately, but I know he's always keeping an eye on the markets. Big Chonas, what do you think is going on tonight, buddy? Hey, Ted. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Hello, everybody out there. Um, I was thinking about um, the past couple days of Bitcoin price action, mostly the daily candles. I was thinking about how, uh, would you describe it as the double outside up or the double outside down uh, pattern? And um, it was almost like the perfect situation for Max Payne, where you had three consecutive uh, intraday higher highs. That all ended up closing with lower lows uh, in the previous candle. And that kind of marked, uh, especially the third one there, really marked the uh, top of this current pattern. And, you know, the whole rising wedge, um, you know, possibility, I mean, you have to argue it proved out exactly what it looked like was uh, Bitcoin had been forming a pretty large rising wedge, um, which end up uh, in a situation where you end up taking the stairs up and the, uh, 
and the uh, elevator shaft down. And that's kind of what, what uh, happened here. And this is another example of, um, <clears throat> of you know, trapping bulls uh, in, a, in a pattern of maintaining higher lows, uh, only to, within a matter of, what, 36 to 48 hours, uh, break every support that had been established over, what, a month, a month and a half time. How emotionally um, devastating is that if you're in the trade to kind of just all of a sudden, right? Like you think you've, you know, flipped those levels in your favor. Well, I think it, it depends on how you've been comparing this market to other markets. So, you know, the S&P and the Dow and stuff had a down day, but it wasn't, you know, crazy. It was a couple of percentage points. But Bitcoin dropped, what, like 10, 12 percent in the past two days. So clearly... Um, the market is judging Bitcoin as uh, still uh, very much um, risk off. And the kind of trickle up we've had over the past several days was or past several weeks, really, was just the culmination of uh, supply, demand and balance. Uh, demand was higher and exceeding supply, uh, not by much, but just by enough to get that kind of trickle up uh, situation. Um where you would find buyers in the higher low pattern. Um, then you saw kind of that begin to equalize over the past several days with several uh, attempts and, and kind of failed attempts now uh, by the bulls to break over 25K. It kept on being a very, uh, you know, strong magnet followed by a nasty rejection from, uh, you know, the overall um, pattern. So, so where we find ourselves heading into this weekend is Bitcoin significantly more bearish than the overall, you know, equities markets, um, mostly focused on the U.S. And a situation where you now have trapped so many more bulls now uh, in like what the mid the mid 25s. And now we have the 200 is confirmed as resistance. And we have several areas that seem to be strong support that were like a hot knife through butter. So this is Bitcoin doing what Bitcoin does, um, basically uh, making it as hard as it can possibly be on both sides of the market. It's never easy, right? They're always going to do that to you before like a big move. They're going to hurt you on both sides, right, Jonas? Uh, some people like that. <laughs> so that's Big Jonas on Twitter. We're going to go through. We have a lot of people wanting to speak. I want to hear from you on Big Cheds. That's Big Jonas. Let's go for one truth. Let's bring you in on the conversation. It's Friday night. You're joining us. It's casual. Don't be afraid to request to speak. I'm going to try to get through to all of you. One truth. If you're there, uh, we'd love to hear from you. If not, we're going to go with Schmucker Doodle. Schmucker Doodle. I'll give you a five count if you'd like to join the conversation as well. Yo. Hey, Chads. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's going on? Uh, yeah. No, I'm a big fan of yours, and I've been following your stuff, you know, as much as I can, being busy. But um, I'm curious about your strategy because I'm – kind of at that point where I'm trying to figure out mine and I'm trying to think what your entry triggers are usually. I know that, you know, bullish or bearish candles off the top or bottom of the Bollinger bands, um, OBV for reversals, maybe RSI for continuation. Um, and then obviously, you know, the, the eight EMA and the, and the 34. So you know, I'm happy to talk about that. Yeah. And so I'm going to great. And thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to take each question and kind of move on, but you can, uh, I'll give you the answer offline. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah, of course. Today, brother. Thank you Thank so you. much. So I would say go to my YouTube channel. There is a, a webinar, a, a play that's called Masterclass Webinars, and I kind of talk about my whole setup. Um, but really, uh, you know, what I like to do is I like to trade momentum failures, like a, a head and shoulders top where the right shoulder got violated, right? It doesn't break down, but it breaks up. Um, I like to trade like a, an up thrust where it breaks resistance, but then comes quickly back below it or a spring where it breaks support briefly and comes back up above it. So I really like to play like momentum deviations where, where there's a clear fake out. So I watch that. I like to play like a, like a nice ascending triangle that just completed like we had on Ethereum at the 12, you know, 1270, 1290 breakout. Um, that's the kind of trade I like a lot. I'm definitely not trading on RSI. I actually don't even look at it. I've deleted it. I think it's you never, ever want to have a trade based on the RSI. That's like a, a cardinal sin. Um, you can use, use it to confirm an idea, but don't ever let it generate one. Um, 
So no, I'm not using any trades based in MACD, OBV, e- even OBV. It's based on what the price is doing in relation to support. I like a throwback. I like a very well-defined breakout level where the price breaks out and then comes back and revisits that level. I can buy there and have a very binary, um, you know, I'm bullish what about volume? There below. What about volume? What about volume? Volume's telling me which candlesticks to watch. So if there's like a really strong hammer candle with a volume, I want to buy in the retest of that hammer candle support range. All right. Um, I want to look at the volume on the green versus the red candles in the channel and see what they're doing. If it's rising and there's more volume in the red channels, candles and the green candles, that's a problem. That's why we had that bearish divergence with the OBV. But, uh, you know, I'm really just looking at price in relation to horizontal levels for the most part, up thrust springs, failed breakouts uh, and breakdowns or just completed patterns uh, with horizontal boundaries like a head and shoulders, like an ascending triangle. Uh, one truth. Are you there, buddy? It is your time to shine. I'm going to try to get people through here a little bit quicker. We have a lot of people who want to ask questions. I want to get to all of you. Larry, Larry uh, Binance Jr. What's going on, Larry? Are you there? Hey, Chad. I hope you're doing well. Um, I, Thanks, just had a quick, I just had a quick question. If you could kind of describe to me what your trading day looks like and how you structure that. I know you, you check Bitcoin price first thing in the morning, but are you like yeah. sitting at the screen actively trading New York Open Session? I'm kind of just interested here no. uh, what, what life in, life in the day of Chad's looks like from when he wakes up to goes to bed. I mean, I have my family stuff I take care of like anyone else. Um, I have my yard, you know, depending on where I am. I have my yard. I'm walking around the yard. Maybe I'm watering. Maybe I'm not. Um, maybe if I'm, if I'm disciplined enough, I'll get a little workout in. Um, you know, shooting, I'm shooting jump shots, just kind of waiting for the market, you know, the legacy market to open. I kind of know Bitcoin, where Bitcoin's at after I've woken up. And I know you've got a couple hours at that point. So it's probably going to have its next pivot when the legacy market opens. So I'm kind of watching that. I'm usually not trading legacy markets right when they open because like trading in the first half hour, hour of the legacy market is like, you know, a recipe to getting chopped up. Right, Jonas? Well, I was thinking about how after what, seven years, six years, seven of Bitcoin uh, trading, you know, the fact of the matter is Bitcoin never ends 24, seven, 365, even on major holidays. So because of that, there's always a trade to be made and there's always a time to, you know, not make a trade. Um, and I think as, if you want to continue to do this long-term really have to have an understanding that it's okay to take proper amount of time off for your mental health and for the things you have to do in life. There's always a good time to trade. And that time is when you can focus on trading itself and not feel like you have to be distracted by anything else. That's it. You can't let it own you. So, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of waiting for legacy to open. And then, um, you know, once it has its path, I'll watch around uh, candle closing time. I like to tweet, put out tweets um, as close to like candle close. So there's like some value there because you don't want to tweet like early before, you know, early signals. So I've got but there's no like really fixed um, time of when I need to do things. It's a lot of just ebb and flow. I have a lot of flexibility. I've kind of created my life in that way. Um, but it wasn't always this way. My life turned around like the last five years. I mean, it was completely diff- different five years ago. So um, happy to be where I am. Um, I'm working on projects. I have my book coming out later this year. I'm working on that a lot. Making time for video games, uh, fishing, and just hanging out with you guys. I'm doing these spaces. These are awesome. So, you know, am I working right now? I don't know. You tell me. It doesn't really feel like work, but we're just hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. I, I appreciate the response. I'll, I'll switch on the listener. Thank you, dude um let's go what who's next m m a you've been you've been uh, patient we've had you before. how's it going how's it going good to um, see you what's up dude great man so i heard about um this coin called chili's and how they have a partnership with barcelona one of the most financially troubled and corrupt clubs in soccer clubs so yeah. i immediately shorted it um okay and seems like it has a lot to give as well yeah it's been it's been that's a good call you know that's interesting it's been a relative strength participant it's actually still like you're looking to buy the dip on it here daily ema8 and then you'd probably want to buy it around ma200 right around 16 and a half 17 cents but until that breaks until that breaks you're looking to buy it um it's an uptrend i mean irrespective even irrespective of of um, bitcoin's weakness i mean it's still got a good chart really good chart one of the best ones out there one of the top like versus five bitcoin it's, it's pretty bullish versus Bitcoin. versus everything versus every other you could put you could put chz versus 
anything. Ethereum Classic. And that's what you should be looking at, especially on this pullback, is to see which of the coins um, didn't pull back, you know, below the 50% or the 68%. You know, there's a bunch of them that are showing that relative strength to Bitcoin. Now, that could mean two things. Obviously, it can mean, um, you know, strength against, which is important. Mm -hmm. Um, But then in these situations, you see, you know, the market makers start to target these coins what are the laggards you know and those yeah. don't necessarily mean that these are stronger than the others potentially they just haven't been touched yet by the, the, the overall market but eventually they All right. Sorry about that, folks. Anthony, it is your turn. Are you ready to go, brother? Anthony Phipps. Hey, Chaz, can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing? Good, good, good. How you doing, man? I, I bought your book uh, about last year and I've been following you, so I appreciate your help, man. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. I'm glad that it's helping you. Um, so, what's going on? I just have a quick question. Um, from a macro perspective, uh, what are your thoughts on the current state of the dollar and and crude yep. oil, because I saw you tweeting about it a few days ago, and I took a look at the charts of the Dixie, and I was like, all right, I see what he's saying. So it looks like we're going to yeah. head back up to that previous resistance. And It's bullish. Wow, 108. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It looks so like, I took it a, looks, Yeah. It's bullish, right? It yeah. just had a beautiful t- – it just had a beautiful throwback. I tweeted it. It had a beautiful um th- a throwback and a tweezer bottom. It was like a very textbook, you know – um, formation of signals. If you look at August, um, look at August 10th and 11th, right? You see the, the two lower shadows are basically the same and yeah. the candle bodies don't necessarily matter, but it shows that like on both those sessions, the bulls said the line must be drawn here, here, right? right? They're like the right. line must be drawn here, <laughs> like Jean-Luc Picard against the Borg. All right. And so that, right. and so that, that was, and that was a retest of a prior breakout level. Like that was the resistance um, from back in May. So it was like a beautiful throwback with the squeezer bottom. I took a short on the euro dollar there because the euro dollar had a similar setup kind of in reverse. Um, that also gave yep. me much more confidence in um, BTC probably topping. I, st- I started looking at shorts a lot closer too after the- it started to bounce off of that level. Right, 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 right. I know gotcha. people are bullish on oil. I'm not. I mean, it's a nice chart. The, the people who I respect are very bullish on oil. Um but it still has – I haven't seen it yet. I mean, dollar has a clearer, a clearer picture. You know, oil's kind of flattening out against the 200. Um, DXY Especially for heading like it into a straight. recession, you would think that would put downward pressure on the price of oil. I feel only right, right, right. maybe the Russian war or the Ukraine, some sort of like black swan event with an oil tanker, something along those lines. And also remember, Biden's been uh, drawing from the SPR – for months now, at some point, he's going to have to uh, take some of the oil off the market. And, um, you know, we'll see what that does with gas prices. But they want to get to the winter when it's less demand for gas. But you're going to see how that is going to affect Europe, which is its own another problem because of its reliance so much on the Russian oil. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha. Thanks for Anthony. I'm going to move on, brother, right, to the big audience. Thank you, brother. Yep. Hey, um, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. No problem. Yep. Take care, folks. I'm Big Cheds. That's at Big Chonus. Check out my free book, the free version of my book on my YouTube channel. Please go to to, uh, Cheds Trading on YouTube and subscribe. At the top of this spaces, there's a tweet. It says, new follower packet. It has my textbook recommendations. It has um, recommendations for great videos to watch just to kind of learn how to trade. Um, This conversation will go on my YouTube channel in the playlist for spaces check that out as well there's also a scammer warning i'm not on instagram i'm not on telegram i'm not in discord there are people impersonating me so you know my space all right i'm on myspace my face myspace and uh
uh, you know, Truth Truth America or whatever. No, I'm just here. I'm on Twitter, um, YouTube, and Bitcoin Live. Anyway, let, ne- up next we have D A A R seventy five. What would you like to say? It looks like an Arabic name. D A A R seventy five. It is your turn to speak if you would like. Um, I'll give you about a five count, and then I'll move on to the next guest. Hey, Hi. how are we doing? What What's up, my friend? Good, good. Everything good. I'm just uh, enjoying listening to you. Thank you. Uh, my English is not uh, not good enough to discuss with you, but uh, just uh, enjoying uh, your space. Well, thank Nothing you very add. much. Thank you very much. Um, it's worldwide. It's 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 we, it's always happening, and we're all still learning together. Yeah, I'm I'm from Saudi Arabia. If you want to ask anything about oil, I can answer it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, maybe for the next time. But let's. I just want to say thank you for okay. coming up, and, and um, I hope you'll you come are. back next time. Okay. Thank you, brother. I'm That's good. nice. Thank That's you. all you have to do. That's all you have to do is come up and say hello. Hit request. I'll get you in in the conversation. Against all odds, you are up next. Uh, what would you like to say? <laughs> Against all odds, it's your turn to speak. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yo, what's going on? Hey, so, um, all right, so backstory about me. I got in about 2017, um, did the whole, you know, FOMO into that bull market, uh, got burned, learned how to trade and everything, preparing for this one, um, and I did really well. Uh, and I, I waited to quit my job until uh, this bear market was, you know, significantly in it to make sure I could trade both ways. So a few months ago, I quit my job and uh, I'm just trading full time now. And I, I just wanted to kind of ask you, like when you first went, um, when you first went like full time, like I'm feeling like more emotions than I ever felt before. And all. it's like a different set of like, it's more real now. Like, and, and what's messed up is I know I don't need like the money. Like I don't have to make a trade. Um, good, I'm good, 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 good. But, but, but I'm still feeling that like, you know, I'm not bringing money in this week or, well, look, you know, bro, whatever. You're, you're, you're alive, right? If you weren't feeling something, you wouldn't be alive. Um, growth is hard. Change is hard. Um, you know, my whole life's transformed. It's not, it's hard, you know, if I tell you about my path, it may or may not be, um, I'm going to mute you real quick. It's going to be background uh, noise. It may or may not be analogous or be helpful. I mean, you know, five years ago I had cancer and I was pretty much bankrupt. Um, and, you know, crypto was what kept me not thinking about my health situation. And I kind of crawled my way up and like my life turned around, you know, 180 degrees or whatnot. So um, I've been trading for a lot longer than that, but I wasn't trading that well at that time. I was doing okay, but um, it was hard, right? So if you're full-time, that's great. You you know, um, I would think about position sizing too. Even though you don't really need the money, um, as you put it, or you don't need to trade, be careful that you also aren't loosey-goosey with your trades um, if and when the, t- you know, when the time does come. So I would, I, I would have a really disciplined position sizing um, and heavily journal too, because you're going to need to keep learning. It's brand new. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a long career for you. So, really, from trade one, uh, make sure you're going to journal. Would be my suggestion. Okay, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, if uh, if Jonas, if you got anything you want to say on it, just like I, I get just the psychology of like, I mean, it's just a big leap, you know. And I I knew this was going to happen. Thank but, you, man. Uh, Man, what do you got, Jonas? Yeah, so a couple thoughts, and I can relate to this personally because there was a point in my life where I basically, when you decide to take the leap and say, okay, I, I, I want to be a full-time trader versus I, I am a full-time trader. There's very two differentials there. And um, what most um, legacy traders uh, tend to do because they're also investors is they basically space out their achievements uh, quarterly. So, you know, crypto n- never ends, but if you can kind of space out your achievements on a three-month period, that can kind of set your barometer for, okay, am I, am I successful or not? Obviously, your balance, your portfolio account um, will reflect that. If you're able to have a good winning streak, 
make sure you pay yourself, take money out of that trading account. And then third is just don't feel compelled to always trade. Um, it's, it's very possible. And I speak from experience that you can, you know, make, you know, five to eight trades a month and just nail them because you were patient and you're watching and have a very good month. You don't need to make 80 or 180 or or hundreds of trades a month, uh, to feel you just have to scalp and slay and knife and snipe to, 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 to call yourself a full-time trader at the end of the day, at the end of the quarter, you know, it's the numbers on the account that really are the most meaningful. So th- think about it like that. You are your own business um, if you are a trader and you can basically choose and understand, you know, if you're actually able to do and are successful at it. All right, man. So, but what do I do if I get bored? Uh, oh, wait. Okay. I'll do other stuff, you know. Yeah, you're well, right. And that's the thing you have to do is you're not doing your nine to five. You're not driving to work anymore. So you're not just trying to figure out how to have the discipline to trade but discipline to know when to trade and then to revolve your, your life around that properly. And it's not easy for people, especially people that, you know, don't come from money or haven't had money or were able to make a lot of money and now are not sure how to maintain that, which is obviously the most important part. Thank you, Big Chonis. At Big Chonis on Twitter, I'm at Big Cheds. Please consider following both of us. Freedom Junkie. We'd love to hear from you today. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, but I almost lost my voice. I think I'm the first uh, female caller. No, uh, we, have big, we have big Jonas with us. Uh, oh, it's also a female? I thought it was a male. I'm, I'm just messing with him. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about my voice. Anyway. No, Thank you for so, coming. Thank you for coming. What's up? Yeah, so I just have uh, one question. Um how do you see the price action from here? Do you see uh, Bitcoin going up and, and testing 25K again? Or do you think we're going down, down, down from here? So, well, you know, well, let's, let's, let's talk about what we know, right? Let's talk about what we know. We know we've been in a really nice rally, for, rally from 17 to 25K. Right. Uh, we, know we, we know we just had, and along that way, we had a series of checkpoints where, where every time the price um, came back, it was, it was a little bit higher. So that mm-hmm. higher low, right? So we have right. a series of higher lows. So we just had a bunch of warning signs, you know, five or six days ago with those outside bars that I tweeted yeah. about. Yeah. You know, I, I made that, I made the uh, metaphor about like rock, paper, scissors, the paper enveloping the rock. Mm-hmm. We had that, that led to a test of that key level, that key higher low at 22.5 and we just lost it. Mm-hmm. That's still the level. So any bounce now has to meet that level. You can't think about 25K anymore. You okay. can't think about 25K until you flipped 22.5. We're just below that level now, which means any bounce into that level should be shorted or faded. Mm-hmm. That means anybody who's buying here should sell um, at 22.5. On the other okay. hand, if it breaks it, it's a good spot to buy because mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a pivot level. It's a cl- pivot level. So you have to go level to level based mm-hmm. on momentum, whatever the, within the, the, the broader context of the yeah. price trying to hold the weekly MA200, um, you know, mm-hmm. I'd say it's, it's a pretty good chance we retest, you know, 17 to 19K. I think that's a pretty good chance. I think it's a two out of three if, you had, if I had to guess. At this what point. about 25? How, what is the probability? Well, we can't talk opinion? about 25. We can't talk about yeah, 25. Yeah, I think the question about 25 really is, is the question about do we go lower mm-hmm. than the do we break 20k again? I know Chad's had talked a lot about the the importance of 20k, how it was such a meaningful top of 2017 bull market, and this is the first time in any previous Bitcoin bull market that we've penetrated a previous all time high. We've never done that. We've always held a higher low until this current stance of Bitcoin price action. So mm-hmm. what this move does is open up a larger range, right? Mm-hmm. We have 17.6. We got 25K, you know, that's almost eight grand in, in between the two. Yeah. Um, who's to say we can't expand that, to, you know, below 17 mm-hmm. uh, or back in the teens and then up to another 26 only to get rejected. You know how quickly we can fall right. now from 25 to what, 21 mm-hmm. in like, you know, a, a week's time. So that means there's not strong enough buyers 
establish mm-hmm. anywhere near 23, 24, 25, except the, tra- the trap longs now. I'm sure there are several. And then the last mm-hmm. thing I'll say is how meaningful is going to be this Ethereum event? Is mm-hmm. this the main driver of this overall um, that kept bounce, maybe, or just, mm-hmm. you know, overall uh, move in the market? And when that's over, is it going to be an example of a buy the rumor and then sell the news event, which seems to be very consistent in crypto, uh, mm-hmm. If you've been here for a few years, where we get that run up to the event and then the big sell off. Uh huh. Everybody's talking about that, but I haven't. I don't know. Well, uh, so listen, it's a month. Let me wrap it's this up. Let me wrap yeah. this up, if I may. Yes. Um, and, and thank you, Big Turner. Look, I don't don't think about twenty five k until we can get back up above twenty two five. Like right. that's just a really important level, and we just lost it. Um. It's mm-hmm. unclear. It's unclear where support is because um, we just rose all the way up, and it's like we just had a huge market change. It just happened, so yeah. it's a little. It's a little bit of nobody really knows exactly over the next twenty four or forty eight hours what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, more than usual. More than usual, pe- nobody really knows for the next twenty four or forty eight hours. Okay, I'm nodding. Just, we just broke out of a mature pattern, right? Um, yeah. We, so so we got to kind of let it shake out a little bit. Um, but if we get above 22.5, I think you can be a little bit more optimistic, okay? Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you for your response. Thank you for your question. Thank you. And I uh, hope you have a great night. You too. All right. So next up, we have Mohammed, who's been patient. What's up, Mohammed? Hey, Chad. How are you? Uh, so I'm calling from Egypt. So it's a little bit late, but this is a worldwide space. So I appreciate you having me on. Um uh, I just got a question for you. So um, regarding uh, getting into a Bitcoin short, not right now. I, I wanted to know your idea because the last last couple of candles, oh, not a couple of candles, the last few candles have been kind of choppy. So I wanted to ask when the grave or gravestone doji happened on the 11th of August, that would have been a, a, a trigger to get short, right? But then it came up again and then the outside bar was was a trigger to go short so just my question right here is just how do you position yourself because i'm more detail oriented so so listen listen it's yeah. you're asking the right question look they didn't make it easy for you did they yeah no way they so that's the whole point look that's the whole point when you start to see this that, that was, those kind of shenanigans you know something's up we had triple negative divergence with the obv i've never seen that Three lower highs in the OBV, three unsupported new highs in price, not confirmed by the on balance volume. So that was going up. Then we had, if you look at every bounce in this channel, it had these like upper upper shadows. We had the um, the high wave spinning top on you know July July um, July twentieth. We had another one, whatever, ten days later, July 29th. Th- then we had the shooting star the day after that, and then the gravestone doji you talked about. So with the gravestone doji or any candle. You actually, I mean, you're not going to trigger your trade when that candle completes, right? You're not going, you're not going to go short when a, when a gravestone doji completes. What you actually want, you want a retest of the top of the doji, the middle to the upper top of the doji. That's where you go short, mm-hmm. right? You go short on the retest of the upper range. You know, that's in, in candlestick theory. That's where you get your best entries. Maybe even better, you get an up thrust, a brief break of the top of the doji, and then you come back in a deviation below. And we had that. And so you've got short already on that first outside bar, but then the next day it broke that high again. So it triggered like everybody's stop loss who was short and then it flushed. So um, <laughs> it's never easy. And I would say pay attention when you get the, those kinds of um, things happening and, you know, double outside bar. That's a pretty big deal after an advance at the upper Bollinger Band with, you know, kind of in the still still in the shadow of that gravestone doji. Yeah, yeah. So, so the second outside bar on the fifteenth was, as you said, a, a, a stop loss hunt. So, my question is, how do you position your stop loss not to get chopped out multiple times? Because, as you said, it, it hasn't been easy. It's just going to get stopped out, and you just you jump back in when your when your trade idea. Yeah, is the point of, this, of the move was that there's no way to get a position on it because you put the higher high in, right? So the mm-hmm. market basically assumes that people are going to be positioned. Um, to stop out of their bearish positions if it goes to a higher high, which is yeah, logical. Exactly. So you just wick them out. And I say, and we, we talk in abstract, right? We talk in they and them. Who, who, who are they? Who are them? Well, 
let's be honest here. There is a small number of people that control most of the Bitcoin. And that is what they are positioning themselves in. There are bigger players that try and move the market around at certain times. Um, and when they're caught off guard and there isn't enough buy support, that's when all the things. So a lot of the dump we saw today and yesterday was all basically people out of position long having to cover and intensifying you know, the long squeeze. And that's kind of what we uh, saw happen here. So it's like a, a snowball rolling down that hill and increasing uh, velocity as it does. We've settled. And I think honestly, a lot of it has to do with because this is Friday and the stock market's closed. There's a lot less institutional volatility, I guess, right now, if you will. Um, but that doesn't mean that there was significant damage done, uh, not just in the chart, but psychologically. And how many altcoins uh, gave back so much of what seemed to be for a day or two, a very meaningful advance. Thank you, Mohammed. It was a great question, very thoughtful question. I appreciate you joining the conversation. We're going to move on. We have a large audience and many people hoping to speak. Folks, don't be shy. Hit that microphone button. I want to hear from you. You can just come up and say hi, ask a question. Uh, Mansa, it's your time. Mansa Musa, what's going on? We'd like to hear from you. Um, hi, Chad. Thank you for um, letting me speak. Sure. Um, I've, it's it's been crazy uh i've had a couple of losses um only so a I'm, couple only a couple you're doing you're doing pretty good <laughs> i've had a couple of losses um but you know there's always that thing telling you okay maybe it's gonna bounce back just hold on a bit go into the market and i think that that was my problem that's why i had you know those couple of losses but so far it's 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 been okay i'm just watching you know I've lost um a couple, yes, but I I how how do you? My question is, you know, um, when you get into the market, it feels like when you get into the market or when you trade to make, um, how do I say? When you're greedy, you feel okay. I'm making this amount of money. Okay, I, I probably would like to go in again to make more. I feel like when you. Yep. When you're greedy, that's when you lose the most. Yeah, it's because a great I, topic. I, great yeah, because I used you. to trade. I used yeah. to trade like every single day. Ooh. So listen, brother, I, let's address that topic. I want to say thank you for stepping up. It's a really great topic. Uh, you know, honestly, my biggest losses come after my biggest wins, without a doubt. Um, I find that if I really nail it, and uh, then you stop and think, you know what? You think now I, I've made it, I've figured it out, I can do it, I can do it again. And you just immediately get like, you know, three or four times the size normal on, on like the next trade or the next, you know, series of trades. And you lose a little bit and you say, well, I can afford to lose this money over here because they made it up over there. But no, that's that's not the way to do it. You have to be extra careful after a big win. Maybe even play a smaller than normal position size next time. You're playing against yourself. The battle is against yourself. And your greed, Monsa, that's a great topic. Thank you so much for stepping up today. Uh, large bean behavior. What would you like to say? Large Hi. bean behavior. Hi, Chad. Thank you for letting me speak. My, What's going on? My question is uh, just a noob here, literally just started trading this week. As someone with a nine to six job working in London from home, how should I structure, structure my day? To, yes, here's, to, here's, to exactly what profitable. here's what you want to do. I would pretty much, I mean, you're a weekend. I wouldn't put any money in yet, actually. Give it like maybe a month. Start watching my YouTube channel. Watch every single video. Watch all the um, market updates. Listen to all these spaces. You can listen to hours of people like you asking questions and getting answers. Watch, um, there's a free version of my book. It's 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know Trading Wisdom. 16 of the 50 are free so far. So go watch those. Watch my um, my playlist called Masterclass Webinars. Like start to really get a feeling of what's going on first. And then when you're ready to start and you have a basic understanding of trend analysis, you have a basic understanding of trade structuring, how to decide what a trade idea is and when that trade idea fails. Because when it fails, that's when you pull your money out. You know, you take a loss, your stop loss. When you've got all that and that kind of those basics, then you start a trade journal. You enter your first trade, why I'm entering the trade, um, what you know? What I think is gonna, what I want to happen. What's my target? Um, what's my thesis? 
and what's my stop loss and how I'm feeling when I'm entering the trade. And when you exit the trade, write all that stuff down as well. It's going to take you a long time of building up muscle memory um, of trading and studying charts. I would start with a really small watch list, maybe six or eight, and just kind of learn the in and action, you know, the ins and outs of that price action. I think people tend to watch too many charts. That's a, that's a problem. I would also have a very simple trading setup. I wouldn't use RSI. I wouldn't uh, use any kind of um, oscillators. I would maybe just do a few simple moving averages. Whatever you kind of uh, decide on, just have it be a simple setup, ideally structured around price, either holding support or not, right? Or breaking through resistance. It's also important to think about why you're entering a trade. I think one of the hardest things to do as a trader, and this is where I learned that I was excelling, I almost felt to like another level of trading, is to feel comfortable enough uh, to buy the red candle, you know, to, to buy the washout. So many people are re- reactive to the green candle, the big move, right? And a lot of times in crypto, these moves happen really fast. Like you got to be right on it within seconds sometimes uh, before you, you, you miss the bulk of, of the move in, in some uh, circumstances. So it's, it's one of those things where you have to ask yourself, why am I entering this trade? Am I chasing this green candle? that I wish I was already in the trade before the green candle happened? And what would be the thing that would have, you know, got me into a bullish trade, you know, on the red candle? And those are the things that I try and focus on to get myself in the best position. And the same is on the short side as well, you know, to if you want to short something, you have to buy into the green candle, you know, to get your best uh, leverage on it. So let me let me let me kind of uh, bullet bullet point that that wonderful point by Big Jonas, and I'll and I'll give you a few more bullet points. And we'll wrap it up. It's a great question. Um, so first of all, so write that down. So if you want to long, wait for a dip. If you want to short, wait for a rip. Right. You need a move to fade. Um, lastly, don't ever add to a losing position. Right. Just be like I'm out. Oh, you know what I mean. Don't stop adding to losing positions. And stop playing downtrends. Don't play anything. Don't go long in anything where the the 200 moving average, where the price is below it and the 200, 200 moving average is moving down. That would be my advice to a brand new trader. That would be my advice to myself, you know, when I was starting to trade. Uh, Phil, Philippe, Philippe, if you're around. Yes, what, sir. What is up? Hey, how's it going, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing all right. What's up with you? All right, well, tell me the price of Bitcoin, and I'll give you a breakdown analysis of what I think is a buy-sell decision. It's 20.943 U.S. dollars. Okay, 20.943. So it's uh, kind of like a, a reason to think that maybe in the spectrum of the entire universe of historical prices, it's kind of like in the first uh, quadrant of the 25th, 25th percentile. Is that being correct? Um, you'd have to ex- elaborate before I could comment. So, like, I mean, what was the highest that Bitcoin ever been has ever seen? Like, let's call it sixty nine, just to keep it clean. Okay, sixty nine. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought it did actually go up to a hundred thousand. Uh, no, 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 no. Sixty nine. You know, like sixty nine k, November tenth. Okay. Well, taking that, you know, rock paper scissors was drawn, <laughs> and this is a reason to be in the uh, in All the right, right camp, go. the right yeah. flow of the market itself. Yeah. Well, uh, look. taking that we are negatively correlated with uh, with all the other markets like the yeah. Shanghai and the uh, the Hang Seng and everything like that that are known to break down. What about the percentile that we are in from twenty five? What is it that you told me? Twenty point five. We're, we're just under 20K, bro. 21K. We're just under 21K. We're just under 21K. And so what percentile does that make us from the ultimate high? Uh, we're like 33% or you know, whatever. Something like, you know, uh, less than third, like 30% or something roughly. 28%, whatever. Something like that. Just just uh, back back in my mind math. What's, what's okay, your point, so brother? We've got a long run. What, what's the point, brother? So that's going to be that's going to be the basis of probability in between this level and the next level. That's my greatest hunch. I mean, that's I mean, yeah. So so let's explore that a little bit. I mean, it's like how are you, how do you define momentum? And there's a trend, and you have 
you know, the idea of since it's it's been at 69K or 70K before, does it mean it's inevitable it gets up to that point? And I think, and then you think about your time horizon, right? So I think that's, right. a, there's a lot, you have an evolving and you have just a whole, it's a nascent, nascent space where it's brand new, it's 12 years. And it's a question of, is the next 12 years going to be like the last 12 years where we always, you know, drop 80% and then make a new high. And that's what it's been the pattern. So I think that things are changing. I think we have to be a little bit more open-minded to what it, what Bitcoin may do. It may drop to 10 K and stay there for half a year and then bounce to 40 K. And then that would be an unbelievable move. There's right? also a meaningfulness of where we, we are at a current price compared to where we have been and how many people have bought above that level. I mean, re- regardless if you feel at 25 K or we're at 21 now, whatever, I mean, it's, it's not that big of a move and you think about it in the larger scheme, but there's still tons of people that were Bitcoin buyers above 30, 40, 50, and $60,000. So the relativeness of where Bitcoin currently priced is, is still kind of a bullish argument for Bitcoin. You know, wow, at least I didn't buy it above 50K. Maybe I'll buy it and hold it now in the low 20s and maybe it goes lower, but you know, at least I didn't buy it at that high level. A lot of that factored into the market at three and 4K those people that no matter what, even though it was tested multiple times, you know, I'm not selling, I'm not selling because at least they didn't buy in the teens at that point. So that's how Bitcoin builds a base long term, um, you know, for that next cycle. All right. Thank you so much. Um, one moment, please. I'll call you when it is your turn. Uh, let's see. Up next, we have it is your turn, actually, I believe. All right. BMO, b- bless. What's going on, buddy? What's up, Chad? Thank you for your generosity, brother. You're the, Thank you're you. The, you're the embodiment of Bitcoin. You you serve yourself and serve the collective at the same time. So I just oh, want to thank you for that. That's, I'll drink to that. <laughs> I'll drink to it, too. I got a seltzer in my hand. Good. Um, so, so listen, you know, I'm at the stage of trying to pick bottoms and pick tops. And I yeah. think in your book, you said you really didn't start making money until you understood that you had to ride the wave. R- yeah. ride the, can you talk about the epiphany? Yeah, so, it's, Well, you know, it's interesting. So Peter Brandt, he, in his book, I read his book recently, Diary of a Commodities Trader. He talks about playing within the 30-yard 30, 30 lines. So if you mm-hmm. think about a football field and, uh, you know, the red zone is the 20-yard in. But let, let's say like the momentum turns around so like that. The whole meat of the move is from one one thirty yard line to the other. OK, so it's like it's all about riding the trend and benefiting from it. I mean, if you're really agile um, and depending on your technique, I mean, you can ca- get close to a bottom, but there's, you're never going to get the bottom. Uh, you can get close to it, especially if you wait for like a retest of a low. That's a pretty good way to do it. Um, like, for example, if Bitcoin right now drops to 17K and then quickly goes to 16 and then bounces up from there. Up, you know what I mean? It would create that little false break. Yeah. You know, that's something you could watch for, and you could get back in at 17. You wouldn't be at 16, but 17 is pretty close to the bottom if it then goes to, you know, 40, 50. Um, okay. So you can, but for most of the time, you're really, you know, better off just waiting for a confirmation or waiting for like a good dip to buy if you think it is bottoming, like a good, a good throwback to a broken level. I mean, Bitcoin gave us a few of those. If you were an op- if you were a, um, optimistic bull, um, you know, you, you had some throwback opportunities. Um, you, ha- you know, it, it used the EMA 34 as support for like the last month or two, m- month or so. Um, yeah. You know, so you could have bought there, um, but um, you ride the trend. You're never going to get the, the whole move. You know, uh, but my, my question to you, like, like for this rising wedge. So is yeah. the trend is, is the trend up or is it the, the larger trend of down? You know what I'm saying? Which one do you play? Or do Happy you want- to explain this. So so. You have the primary trend for Bitcoin is is a bull trend. Yeah. That's the 200 weekly moving average. Yeah. All right. Now, the secondary bear trend is the one that's currently in command Mm -hmm. and has been since November. We attempted to to reverse out of the secondary bear trend in February and March. Mm -hmm. Right. When we started to go sideways, then we tried to break out. Mm-hmm. We're, we've been kind of in that mode since uh, whatever it was, like July 8th or whenever we started to close above the, the, the uh, 34 again. Yeah. So we're in a mode where, where the bull trend was preparing to try to regain momentum. And to do that, it would have had to clear 28K. It would have had to clear the MA200, which is around 30K. 
and then we could have resumed the the larger bull trend okay okay but but in this in this um secondary in this um relief rally so within the secondary trend and then you have the relief rally and this relief rally it was very mature it went on for so long that like it, it was just ready to break down or break out it was super mature and then you had the bear divergence in the daily chart and you had all these upper shadows you had the you had the outside bars, you had all these up thrusts. It was just it had all these like it had these like weakness signs written all over it. Yeah. Um, so but maybe that was a trap. You know, how do we know it wasn't gonna rip to twenty eight K? So you have to be agile. Whatever you're doing, you have to have a good theory, but expect the market's also trying to trick you. Yeah. And then so you'll kind of just be a little more careful. Yeah. Quick quick uh, story, uh funny story. No, we gotta move on, brother. I, oh, okay, I, all right, no problem. I, I'm sorry, man. I, we have a big Cheers. room, man. It, yo, thank you, man. Thank you, BMO. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yo, what do you got? Um, I just wanted to push back on what you just said about How the dare overall you? trend of Bitcoin is bullish. It is. Um, From I would classic say starting if standpoint. We, yes, if we go back under 20K, I would say that is not bullish because we double dip below a previous all-time high. That's a na- that's a narrative. I'm talking about um, it's not a narrative. It's a talking fact. about classical charting definition. The we- the 200 moving average is the trend in classical charting, and it's still rising. We have an unconfirmed uptrend. I'll give you that. With the price below it, it becomes an unconfirmed uptrend. Can you point Back to in- one please- time in history that the 200 has not been rising? Because there 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 isn't. One. That, that's my point. Then that's my point. That's the trend. Not on Bitcoin. But, on other stuff. On yeah, plenty but of other I could argue that. Two things that have never happened before is Bitcoin t- trading consecutive weeklies below the 200. But I agree with that. Sent- that's more of a sentiment call of whether or not it's a, like a, you're thinking more philosophically. Is it a downtrend? I'm thinking academically speaking. I'm talking more well, academically, academically. Is about is about facts and math. No, right? academically so is about the 200 number, moving the average. More important point. No, academically is what is the 200 moving average doing, and is the price up up above it or below it? That's it. There's no wiggle room. That's it. That's why does trend. it have to the 200? It's just the way it is. I don't create, you know, why? Ask the price. So I have to wait 200 periods of data to see back that far? Yes. To yeah, know that's, what's why, I, that's why I won't even look at the monthly chart in Bitcoin. The monthly bit chart in Bitcoin is too young. It doesn't even have a 200 MA. That's why it's but invalid. But that range can be huge if that's the case. I, you know, we all have to find a method that works for us. I feel like, I'm, for me, a more conservative filter. More strict methods keeps me out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? I think if we break 20K, then we are in a situation that Bitcoin has never seen before. All right. Especially with the double break. We have uh, Jackson in the house. Action Jackson. What's going on? Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I've actually only listened. Sorry, I'm kind of sick at the moment. Uh, first around with COVID. But I really just wanted to come up and say I appreciate your guys' sincerity um, Chad's I've listened in only once or twice on a Twitter space and, um, I can just, I can feel your heart through the, through oh, the space. I appreciate that's it. That's like the nicest thing you could say. And thank you. Well, can you still hear me or is that it? Wow. That was yeah, super nice. That's just, really all I had to say. Yeah. I was just basking in your, <laughs> I was just basking in your comments. So sorry about that. Uh, thank you. That's, Look, I mean, look, I got wrecked so many times. I'm super, I'm like, I'm a reformed noob. All right. Like if you look at um, my like tagline on social media since 2014, when I started doing this is helping new traders avoid my old mistakes. And this is what it all, it is. So it's all like, it's all from experience. Let's get a few more of you in on the conversation. I'm Big Cheds. Check out the free version of my book on my YouTube channel. Please consider subscribing. Cheds Trading Cliff. We've had you before. We're happy to have you again. What is up? Yeah, what is up, Charles and Chess? Uh, just first of all, I want to say that I'm a big, big fan. You're like Batman and Superman. And just please keep doing it because, you know, you give us so much insight and that's very appreciated. So okay. basically, my question, I'll just give you a very, very brief uh, history of me and, and crypto. Um, I started seriously following it, Bitcoin since it was like 64K yeah, at the top. I started buying it since it was like 50 because for me that was a big dip and I kept buying until it was like 29k very convinced we're gonna go up which we did 
Um, I almost tripled my money degening on NFTs and be having like much bigger balls than any kind of knowledge. And now, when we're in the in in the bear market, which I was aware of those, obviously I I seen them before, but uh, never done like deep analysis analysis of it. And now I am a member of Bitcoin Life, and you said you need to uh, be either a trader or an investor, or or you need to focus on one or, or the other. And my idea was uh, I will buy the the dips, same as I was was uh, buying in the in the bull market. So I was basically buying the falling uh, knife since like 30k down to 17k. My average price is like 23k, and I was thinking yeah i'm gonna sell any kind of like you know a local uptrend or whatever to call it and now i figured out like oh shit is the the macro is really bad and you know everything is going down so i basically sold half of my position uh on on this uh, leg up at 24k which made me a very small profit uh and now I'm I'm just not sure how to proceed because uh, I yeah. know that you know I know we may go much much lower and I'm just uh, trying to find the uh, the ideal balance between being a trader and an investor because I would like to have yeah. a long term position but yeah. at the same time I would like to play with the trading and and educate myself and learn how to become a trader and so what's the what's the optimum balance or you know any suggestions how to do both and on what to focus more. Thank you. Thank you for coming up, Cliff. It's great to hear from you. Nice to see you again. I know you've been in the spaces before. The, um, the solution, the answer in, like, to a lot of these questions, the answer to many of these questions is position sizing. So it's great that you sold half there because you now have a easier to manage position. Whatever, you know, when you take profit on something or even when you take a partial loss, you're, you're making every future decision easier because it represents a smaller percentage of your risk assets. So that's the right approach. You have to position size, and I have this mosquito thing going off in the background. Hopefully you don't hear it. You probably don't, but I do. Um, you have to position size uh, in a way that you can still be comfortable, right? Because if you buy something and you feel uncomfortable, you have too much money in the trade, you need to get out. Uh, if you buy something and you're excited, you're probably gambling. So you have to have like a good you know, casual, casual acquaintance with the money to where it can go to work and you can let your thesis play out, but you're not going to over trade it. You're not going to over manage it. And it doesn't really make you um, sweat. And it doesn't really make it so you can't like live your life. Um, trading versus investing. I mean, you know, if you're investing though, I mean, aren't you eventually going to want to sell it for a profit? So you're essentially trading it unless you're investing it to like give it to your kids, I guess. So it's I, it just when you play with these words, I'm either X or I'm Y. I mean, you have an idea and what your idea is, you want to buy it lower and sell it higher. So let's just keep it simple. And it's a question of when that idea will fail. Stick to that. Have a, have a position size that's more manageable. And Remember that, the investors uh, in 2016, 2017 who were buying Bitcoin, let's just say above $10,000, they kind of felt like idiots for a while, right? Bitcoin traded under 10K uh, for a very long time. But if they didn't sell, if they held on, then they were rewarded. So are you, are we there now? Are we in the, the, the you know, the dog days of 2018, um, which if you were around were very frustrating. And then we had a nice relief rally, which took a bunch of coins up to like, wow, you know, and really nice moves. Um, only to give significant amounts of that back. So it's about time horizon. And, you know, only with time horizon can you really decide, are you a trader or are you an investor? And you can be both. You can continue to hodl long-term thought process and hold no matter what. And then you can kind of trade the, the edges along. I mean, people that rode the stock market down in 2008 and were down huge for years, Yada, yada, yada. If they had been accumulating, you know, dividends and reinvesting those into new shares over the, the teens, um, that paid off in major ways. You're able to reinvest at a lower price than you used than you were buying. And that's the longer term uh, strategy of investing, which is Bitcoin traders and investors need to know now is that volatility is huge the price and percentage swings are huge and you have to trade that accordingly that's my man big chonus and big chads uh netty Nati. what would you like to say today Nati?
Hey, Big Chess, how are you, man? Good, how are you doing today? I'm great, I'm great. Uh, so, um, just want to say thanks for um, all the knowledge that I get from you. And uh, I'm from Israel. And actually, I'm lost like 50%, but I was down 80%, like one year in crypto. And and I think, I, I, I think I'm getting stuff figured out right now. Just want to say thanks and uh, shalom, brother. Shalom. <laughs> yeah, shalom to you too. Shabbat shalom. And uh, listen, actually, it's not, listen here. Listen, let's let's cut to it, right? Like, I use this. I did a spaces. So it's a couple things. So I did a spaces. Um, and sorry for you know cutting you off, but I think I'll get there. I did a spaces. It was yesterday, and, and some guy talked about how he had this, like had a really terrible experience in his like beginnings, you know, of trading. Um, and I said like. Right. No, picks up a guitar and can play stairway to heaven like immediately right, right. <laughs> so you know like we have to survive this exper- uh, experience definitely so, so to survive it you have to define your risk you have to set the parameters of your experience your position size um you have to stick to your you know when the idea fails you have to stick to it you know you have to find a way to be in control as much as you can and then the, the stuff that's not in control you'll never be in control of but you got to find a way to survive so you can build up the experience, the muscle memory, and the instinct that's required, you know, to become a cold-blooded killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I figured um, and, and once, you're, once you're down, when you're down like that and you're hurt in bed, then, then you, like, when you get up, then, uh, you know, when you get up, then that's when you make the changes, you know. And, Listen, and every time I've had a big loss, I step back and I read a textbook, Okay. I mean, that worked really well. <laughs> it's worked pretty good. <laughs> I came back with some confidence. You know, yeah. without confidence, you've got nothing. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, man. I got it. All right. So kind of think about how to build up your confidence more than anything. Don't don't overcomplicate it. All right, great. Thanks, man. All right. Appreciate Thanks. you. Thank, appreciate you tonight. You have to take uh, these experiences as a learning experience. I mean, as Chad keeps on saying, he, he, he learns so much – um about you know uh, having a tough time of trading to only be able to become a much better person because he studied and he learned and that's what everybody here has to really understand is you need to be always understanding why you're making the trading decisions that you are it's the only way you kind of you know understand and fix the problems low loan that's big chonus loness what's up loness you're up next we're going to do a lightning round, folks. Um, I'm going to bring you right up. I'm going to try to get through everyone who's there. Maybe it won't happen. But Loness, what's up, brother? What would you like to say? Um, yeah, I just want to uh, second what a lot of other schools have said. About Friend, I'm going to have to move you. We cannot hear you. I'm sorry about that. You will need to fix the audio. Um, SB Trout Berm. SB Trout. What would you like to say? I'm sorry about that. We could not hear your audio. What's up, SB Trout? Oh. Uh, hey, what's up, Chad? Can you hear me? Just great. You sound like uh, unbelievably good compared to the last one. <laughs> uh, I'm at work. Uh, I, I, I Bitcoin Live subscriber. Not a huge trader, but I, I really value the information. Um, Thank you. Also enjoy your spaces and your tweets. It's very informative. Nice to kind of keep abreast of things. Um, my only question for you is what kind of fishing do you do? I do a lot of smallmouth bass fishing. Uh, large mouth pickerel, crappie, uh, perch, but it's like smallmouth bass is kind of the, you know, is, is the uh, choice of the day, I guess, if I could. But um, I'm I'm doing a lot of top water fishing now too, which is fun. I'm kind of learn. Nice. I'm trying to learn like what I'm not good at. You know what I mean? Like you have yeah. to put yourself in uncomfortable positions. So I'm trying to do that. You know, um, it's a good way to think about trading, trying new things. But yeah, I'm doing trying like top water, so I'm having fun. Cool. That's it, man. Have a good night. That's sweet. I'm so glad you stepped up. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. I love it. All right. Next up, we have America. American Michael, what's going on? Scar- I'll get you next, Garney. American Michael, what's up? Hello, Chez. How you doing, buddy? Good. What's up, my friends? Friend. Hey, uh, you know, I've been following you a long time. Love your stuff. Uh, <laughs> learned a lot from you. I've got two quick questions, if you could address these. You know, you talk about trading all the time. What is a good trade size? I mean, I- I'm used to trading Depends. stocks or options. And it's like I can trade 100 shares of this or 10 options, yeah. but it's hard to trade five Bitcoin because I, I don't have $100,000 to trade. So 
That's my first question. It's not, What's a good it's not the dollar though? amount. It's a do- It's the amount you can walk away from and not let it like have you ah. sleep over it, not gotcha. let it own you. And it needs to be a very small percentage of your risk assets. You know, it should probably, if you have a trading portfolio, it should be like a, a couple percentages at most of your portfolio. You know, okay. we're talking small ball. Like you have to survive a lot of volatility. And if you're in this space is asking me questions, you're probably not a pro already. So you're going to have to survive a lot of bad mistakes. So you got to go in light, journal, heavy journal, take notes, and then hopefully find a little discipline along the way, a little bit of hunger to, to learn, a little bit of drive, and uh, tr- find a way to work it out. Yes, sir. I uh, appreciate that. Second quick question. When do you expect the having effect to begin? I know it's in May of 2024. I don't think it's worth, I'd Did like you to think about that at all. That. No, let's, let's ask me again in six months. All right. Or a year. Okay. Thanks Good for your time, you. buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's great. Real to hear. quick point on that question, if I may, Cheds. Um, listen, the happenings are preset in stone, more or less, and they have precipitated after the happenings. Um, you know, a bull market run doesn't necessarily mark the bottom, though, in any you know, meaningful way. Um, but the thing about that is, is that we have time until the next happening cycle to basically debate if that actually is the next catalyst. The fact that we already have roughly 20 million Bitcoin of the 21, and we're going to create such slower amounts over the next several uh, happenings in the future, I don't know if it's as meaningful as it was in the past too. In theory, it could also be a, a lot meaningless as we continue. As it really doesn't add that many fewer uh, Bitcoin to the overall market. Thank you, Big Jonas. Scarney, what would you like to say? How would you like to? What would you like to say today? Hey, Big C's. Thank you so much, guys. Both of you for uh, all your help these past three years. Um, I I found a lot of success using. Um, for about yeah three or four years using long longer term uh, charts, and then I use your education to try and learn the, the shorter term stuff. But um, I do you ever use like the six month and the one year chart on something like the SPX? Because uh, it kind of the six month chart really um, gave me an idea that uh, with like the bearish engulfing candle, the bearish divergence that popped up in June. Um, it just gave me the idea that, you know, we might be headed into a deeper retracement, uh, possibly to like COVID lows type area. Uh, have you ever used long-term charts like that? All right. So I'm just going to have to remove Sean real quick. When I bring you up, I need to mute you. Lomas, if you keep on muting yourself, you need to wait your turn. Um, Scar, that's a great question. The longer the time frame, the stronger the signal. You know, it's unfortunate in Bitcoin, we can't do that. We can't pull up a six month. You know, we can't even really pull up a one month chart because it's not mature enough. So the fact that you can do that on the on the SPX and on legacy markets, that's something you should be doing. You always want to understand the larger trend um, and then down and in. Right. Because everything has its context. So I think that's I, I just would want to just agree with everything you said. Um, I think I think you should totally do that. And I think, as I said, that's that's the risk in Bitcoin. We don't even have that. So I think we have to be open minded because we're not really able to do that. Jonas, did you want to say something? I think the monthly chart definitely has a lot of data that's useful at this point, 10 years, a decade plus of price action. I think that's arguably enough to get some bearing. But it's a good question in regards to, you know, the three month, the quarterly is important, I think. You know, it gives you a sense of of the overall, um, you know, the overall, long-term perspective and especially if you want to be an investor you know long term what five ten years a decade out you know using a quarterly even a six-month chart can at least give you a sense of of the times that are the most favorable to buy based on the previous candle you know as we said earlier it's important to try and buy the red you know not buy the green especially the very top of the marabozu and I think that's something that, you know, you have to kind of understand that um, the options that Bitcoin price action provides us is still a sense of where we are in this cycle and the possibilities of a higher low is continuing to, uh, to maintain. 
All right, that's great. Great question about longer time frames. Up next, we have uh, I love Delta Wolf. What would you like to say? I love Delta Wolf. We'll try to get through a few more of you here. Uh, it's getting a little bit late, but uh, this is Spaces Conversation with Big Cheds and Big Chonis. I'm on YouTube at Cheds Trading. What's up, man? Yeah, hi, what's up? Hi. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say I longed uh, e ETH at uh, 1620, and I hope it's go up. I have it at 25x leverage, so I hope it goes to fucking to the moon. YOLO, buddy, YOLO. <laughs> yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, thank you. I would say I hope you I hope you um, are successful in your ventures, and, and thank you for stepping up. Um, next up, we it's have also you. very important not to basically put all your money into one trade. If you're looking to shoot the moon or something, being able to dollar cost into a better entry than just a single time will always be much more beneficial to where you want to end up in your price action. The big hit, and you have no real, yeah, I get it, I get it. The big hit, and then you have no real uh, wiggle room basically to get yourself a better dollar cost average so space out your trade space out your entries neil what's going on neil what would you like to say chads how's it going man big chon is yeah i'm joining from europe where it's three in the morning but i, I had to uh, listen to you guys and I, I listened to another space where big chon was talking and i was so impressed with everything literally everything that that the guy was saying, I'm, 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 I'm uh, slowly becoming uh, a big fan of his. Um, he, well, that, he, he that makes three of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a brilliant guy. He, he like he, he also really knows what Bitcoin as an asset is. You know, yeah, he's a good he, dude. He's been around Bitcoin longer than I have. So. Exactly. So my question is, I'm uh, like. Um, knowing what Bitcoin is, a big chone is like you just mentioned that it's not as centralized as 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 people think it is, and uh, you know this, but many people uh, seem to ignore this fact. Also, we all know that the market clearly gets manipulated by whales and by tether and and all the printing that they do. There's not really much real volume. There's lots of wash trading. There's massive leverage in the system, um, like. Um, and and no, know, knowing what you know about Bitcoin is basically my question. Knowing what you know, um, are you worried at all that if we get another um, a big crash, that we might uh, never recover from it, or um, that, or, or or do you think just like most uh, people that it will eventually uh, recover just like it it did in in the past? Well, I mean, that's kind of the um, that leap of faith that Bitcoiners uh, have taken. And, you know, it's hard to argue with history. We have 10, 11 years of history that if you hodl over the long term, uh, you've been generously rewarded or at least have had a chance to generously reward yourself. You know, how many people were ridiculing those that did not sell at 20k at late 17 you know only to have the at least the chance of the last laugh you know two and a half years later so that's that's the thing about bitcoin is that historically at some point it is able to put in a higher high than the previous top and it takes this entire crypto market with it Right. I mean, we talk about Bitcoin a lot, but the valuations and the percentage moves of the altcoins on this last cycle were some of the biggest I've ever seen. Uh, 10, 12 years of trading bigger and comparable to the maximum moves I had seen on the OTC. Um, so th these were substantial enough to not be forgotten, even though they can be considered shit coins. And um you know, I think that's the thing is that if you believe in the technology and the promise and all that stuff. And honestly, the only thing I really feel Bitcoin has for it is just the scarcity. There could be a point in the future where there's enough people that are just holding it to create such a demand and such limited supply that it could drive the price up in a exponential fashion. It could do that. Um, and that's that's the risk people take. But in that potentiality 
we can see the uh, the pullbacks that uh, Bitcoin experiences. And, you know, you as an everyday person, as a trader, as a, somebody that, you know, just has to live, have to ask yourself, you know, the money in this market, you know, how many people wish they had sold, sold higher, but how many people might get rewarded in the years to come uh, for still holding all this time and potentially even adding to their um, portfolio. So that's what this is all about. And that has to go with stocks and everything, you know, the potentiality that at some point you'll find that breakaway speed and momentum um, of your market and have that opportunity to basically, you know, have that kind of trade that brings you the, the financial freedom, the wealth that we're all basically, you know, trying to do this for. That's Big Jonas, folks. You find him on Twitter at Big Jonas. He's not usually here, but when he is, he's, he's definitely got a lot to say. That was a great question. I'll just say briefly, um, you know, we don't really know. I mean, I think we could see the paradigm shift a little bit with Bitcoin where rather than just, you know, we, we just keep making new highs. We maybe go more sideways and range a lot. You know, the, the more adoption there is, I think we'll see the less volatility over time. And uh, I'm just kind of more open minded to, you know, rather than just always making new highs, maybe we just range sideways between 20 and, you know, 60K for a couple of years. You know, that would be interesting. So um, ask a question of myself or Big Chonus. I don't know, know that we can get through all of you. Um, but we're going to do our best. We're having fun here on a Friday night. I am Big Cheds. That's at Big Chonus. It's the 19th of August, 2022. This is Twitter Spaces. Uh, D-Gen. D-Gen Breath. What's up? What would you like to say? And if you're not there, we'll Yo. give you five count. Yes, can you Yo, hear me, brother. Hi. My man, thank you. Thank you for all of your uh, insights and education. I feel like your Twitter is one of the only places where I'm actually learning the skills. So it's amazing. And I wanted to ask you about setting a stop loss. And when you set a stop loss, you're obviously going to try and set that around a key level. Do you have a max as a percentage of what you would set a stop loss from your entry? So yeah, I'm thinking so it's a great percent too much. But it's a great question. 10%. Great topic. Um, and thank you for, for what you said. I try to be educational. Um, you, there, in classical charting, you need a minimum of three to one risk to reward. So if your stop loss is two percent you need to reasonably be able to make at least 6% before like the next major target, major resistance, right? So that it's so when you're structuring your stop loss, ideally it's pretty close to, to where you enter. So, so you can kind of let go, right? The easier it is, the closer it is to your entry, the easier it is to let go of the trade because letting go is not easy. It is actually really hard to, to close out a trade. If, you know, like a small losing trade, that's a really hard skill. Somehow, it, for some reason, Closing out a small red trade is a really hard skill. Irregardless, it's got to be three to one minimum risk to reward. So that's how you, you should um, start to think think about it for setting your stop losses, okay? Amazing. Thank you, brother. Thank you, friend. You stay strong. Thanks for stepping up. Uh, Anon and Big Jonas. What do you guys have to say, Big Jonas, on that topic? Just real Hello? quick. Um, ask yourself, um, as you're entering the trade, you know, I'm a big fan of scaling into a trade and then beginning to uh, develop a more fuller position. So um, having a finite line in the sand for your stop loss um, is one of those things where you have very little wiggle room. But if you can basically decide to scale into a trade and basically add into your red to a point where you basically have um, evened out where your entry is, that at least gives you a better chance not to stop yourself out too early because then you've allowed yourself to scale in and kind of absorb some of that low time frame volatility and then choose to say, all right, where does this trade thesis fail? And that's where I can then stop myself out. So that kind of one and done is always something that is very hard to achieve because there's so much short-term volatility and those wicks can always stop you out quickly. Thank you, Big Jonas. Uh, Anon, right. what's up, buddy? What's up, brother? Hello, Big Shares. Hello, everyone. 
Four in the morning here uh, from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, listening to uh, Big Share Spaces. Anyways, I do have two questions. One question, brother, real quick. We have a, we have a large right. audience. What's your mo- what my, would you most like to say? Uh, my question is on market volatility and on crypto winter. Is the market volatility going to die down as we head into crypto winter? I've heard you speak about uh, crypto winter back yeah. in, uh, a couple yeah, of times. Know. I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, that's very theoretical i mean i don't know there's nothing actionable about this conversation there's nothing about this conversation that's going to make you be able to make, like execute a trade because we don't have any data on that like what's the point of really speculating um i've just seen it i guess what I, what I can tell you if i can try to add some value to your question is that i mean i've seen it with way less volatility i've seen a much more dull brain market where nothing's going on this is still a very active market so I guess that's what I would say. What do you think about that, Jonas? It all, so it all goes down to volume and the buyers and market speculators. Yeah, you have to have you have to have people disagreeing. If we all agreed about the price, the uh, what it should, what something's worth, the price would never move. So you got to have people on different sides of the trade. Um, what do you, what what are your thoughts on this topic, Jonas? I think we're in a different market now than we were back in 2018 through 2020. There's more participants. There's more eyeballs. There's more uh, people that control more money that have an eye on crypto. And I think what's interesting is how many of those people that got burned this first round are willing to take that second shot. A lot of, you know, uh, institutional conservative money dipped a toe into crypto. And, and some of that got super burned, especially if they were associated with three arrows and such. So, um, you know, how many of those people are about to take another shot at this move? And that's why I think we're still very far away from more meaningful institutional money and investors coming into the market um, in, in a kind of a, a more, you know, meaningful stance. And I think that will continue to put uh, downward pressure hey. on the overall system. Did you see that story about like the Canadian like pension fund or whatever? They they took a big write off, right? Right, and then they said like we're not like no more crypto for us or something, right? So you have like you know that's what came to mind. I, I read that article, I saw that, and that's what came to mind when I was thinking about this. Is that um, you know fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, look like get fooled again. That's what so... my wife keeps saying, but I don't. <laughs> But that, that's a huge thing. I, we, you know, how many, yeah. how many years, Chad, have we been hearing the term, wait till the institutions, wait till that legacy you know, right. money comes in? Well, and it's, rem- it, it did. It tried to. It tried well, you to remember Tesla, Tesla bought all the Bitcoin and then like, but they bought high and Michael Saylor buying high. Like, what is that? You know, what is, so now other companies like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, that, right? Saylor only followed you like a year ago. He was going to save him so much money. He, was he still hasn't followed me. He still has you know. But he knows he's doing. He's playing chess, and we're just playing checkers, big Jonas. So, um, per, Urban, what's up, Urban? Squares. We got big Cheds and big Jonas. This is rare. Urban, what's up? Hi there. Hi Cheds. Hi Jonas. Thanks for uh, putting on these spaces. I've been listening to you guys for a few weeks, um, and uh, I've, I'll try to be quick. I have been scalping on Binance because they have the uh, Bitcoin. Fiat pairs are all 0% right now, so I'm having a lot of fun. It's been profitable. Um, And you kind of touched on this at the start of the call when you said that after a big move, you know, uh, everyone kind of loses their edge. Um, A place that I've found very challenging is uh, right after a big move because it's hard to interpret the market data. So I just guess I'm asking for your thoughts on that. So after a big move, I mean, like right now, nobody really knows because we just broke down. We failed to hold at a key level 22.5. Um, we're kind of in those, I think I said earlier, I don't know if you heard, and thanks for listening, and thanks for stepping up uh, with the question, of course. Um, nobody really, like the next 24, 48 hours, anybody's guess. We're watching the one hour EMA eight. It, it's at the, we're at the beginning of some type of a new price structure. And, and Peter Brand talked about it when he put out his tweet like four days ago with the rising wedge, talk about how, talk about how they can morph into other structure. And the rising wedge is broken down now, do we get like a, a, a double bottom of some type of, of a larger structure that forms based on the prior low? Do we get a retest of it? 
Do we recapture 22-5? I mean, so um, the, it, we we're in a little bit of a different phase now, and we have to give it a few days and let it shake out. So after volatility, go to low time frame, um, but you, you prepare to be stopped out. Um, what do you think, Jonas? You, you, you anything on that, or, or how do you handle that situation? Yeah, I, I, I mean, the rising wedge it broke down. I wouldn't be surprised if we basically form ourselves into some sort of other kind of rising wedge, which in, yeah. in hindsight, right, it was another bear flag, right? It was another bear flag um, that basically broke the channel. And think about how long this, this thing took. It took, I mean, two months, right? It was mid-June, June 16th-ish, where things started to bottom. Okay, we did 60 days of basically an uptrend that got erased in day 58, 59, and 60. So it's it just goes to show, you know, where for now there's kind of a base of support. And I wouldn't be surprised if we try and find a way to trickle up back to, you know, 22, 23, only to get that lower high uh, holding. And then if that continues to happen, then that lower low is then in play. Saeed, Saifal Saeed, what's up, man? Thanks for stepping up. Uh, um, hi, Chad. Um, hi, Jonas. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was listening to this since the beginning. I was thinking I might go to some, go go to sleep while I was thinking listening to it because it's two o'clock in London, um, in the morning. Right. My my question for you is: I was thinking of um, longing BTC from nineteen k, and my thesis was going to invalidate at eighteen k if it breaks down. Uh, but the thing is, what I'm looking at it on a daily chart is you got um, EMA 8 is crossing over to um, EMA 34 from the top. Um, and uh, also there is too many weeks in there. So I'm kind of um, hesitant a bit with this. So what's your thought of it? So listen, you, in moving average cross doesn't matter as much. It's sideways. A moving average cross... It needs a trend to reverse. So if it was an 834 cross after like in November is, is a bigger deal than like uh, we're in a choppy sideways channel from from um, like a month ago when we started to close above the 34. So you can't look at the moving average crosses don't mean as much right now in sideways market. Right. We're in a kind of sideways market a little bit. And so in terms of, I'm not saying yeah, you're wrong, okay. but I'm saying discount the moving average cross signal in your mind. Okay, and in terms of the stop loss in there, so my it's my... as good it's just as good a plan as any. What do you think? It's as good, it's a, it's a, um it's as I good a plan as any. I think the moving average crosses were more meaningful a couple of weeks ago. I think I think the fact that well, like on the bear breakdowns, there was so much about the bearish uh, uh, death crosses, and then you know as we started to cross over. Uh, meaningful EMAs on uh, higher time frames, especially the weekly, um, you could clearly uh, uh, say that this was a different trend, right? But as you said, Chad, um, we've been this kind of sideways chop for so long now, we've been starting to smooth out a lot of those EMAs and MAs um, on low to midterm time frames. So exactly. you're right that, that because they're kind of flattening out now, um, the crosses are kind of meaningless until you, you're able to see that kind of fan out. And the fan out spread uh, will obviously start in lower time frames and work their way higher. And then it's when they're able to be confirmed on the higher time frames, uh, then the trend can basically be confirmed. And that can be, you know, more continued downside as well. They don't necessarily have to fan out to the bullish uh, positions. That was great. That was great from Chonis. Uh, thank you. And Webwise, Bitcoin Live member. What's up, Webwise? Hi, Cheds. Hi, Big Turners. Um, um, I, I came in later in the conversation. I'm not sure if you covered this already. Um, uh, I, the, I, I assume that now is the moment where you need to be closing off your shorts. I have a short on Seoul, and I've been Wondering whether I should hang in there to 32 or close it now. If if we there seems to be an anticipation to 20 for Bitcoin to go to 22,000. So the question is, do you close a trade preemptively, or do you leave a trailing stop loss? That's like the philosophical question, right? Um, right. 
And so how, you know, how about this, instead of, how about you solve that problem by having, instead of one position, four positions doing the same thing. So two of them, you close out right now. And the other two, you leave at different trailing stop losses. You need to give yourself more flexibility rather than an all or none type of approach. You've, you've, you've identified it. Uh, you've correctly made a nice idea. And now you're kind of at a situation where you have to completely close it out. You, you shouldn't have be forced to do that. You should be allowed to close out your risk slowly, you know, scale in and scale out of it. Do you see what I mean? Okay. So take some profit and then, and let the rest ride. Oh my goodness. If, uh, yes. Also, these, these moves were very big. These were big moves. So depending upon where you were able to, you know, or if you were able to short soul over 40, right. And you have a buffer to absorb, um, you know, a small bounce. But if your overall thought is, you know, I've nailed a great short entry at 40 or 39, because I'm thinking so will eventually end up in the twenties. You know, that's what you have to weigh. Um, I will, Willing to give up the gains I've made on this current move, which is substantial, to basically say, all right, because this is I, I've nailed the, the, the overall trend change. And as a trader, it's it's hardest thing to do. The hardest thing to do as a trader, in my opinion, is knowing when to take a win. You know, right, um, right. And I've made lots of that mistake. That's exactly. <laughs> and and there's no right or wrong answer. In, in hindsight, there can be. Oh, here was the nut top. I should have known, but obviously in the moment, you don't know what you're weighing in your mind is, is, you know, okay, I don't want to be greedy, but I've seen things move farther beyond where I thought they could, or am I achieved, you know, a percentage move that's obviously meaningful. And that's really the biggest thing in my book. Like, I feel it's harder for me to keep bigger percentage moves because I'm more conservative in my trading and I'm just going to take the win overall. Um, but that's probably cost me some money in some trades and saved me some in other trades. I think you have to just believe that as long as you're able to close out winning trades, you know, in the long run, you'll be a successful, you know, trader at it. Um, you start being cute with your winners and turn them into losers, and then you, you have a completely different problem. All right. Thank you, WebWise. It's great to hear from you again. Uh, and Big Chonis, uh, Frankie. What's up, Frankie? You've been patient. We'll do a few more of these and we'll, we'll wrap it up. Frankie, what's going on? Hey, hey, Chad. How are you, pal? Good, buddy. What's going on? Man, I've uh, been listening to your stuff for a few months now. Finally uh, jumped onto the Bitcoin Live train. And it's unbelievable in there, the amount of information and quality stuff. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It is epic in there, man. I'm it's trying legit. to get to as it's much. It's totally legit. Yeah, it is. It really is. If anyone is listening to this, is actually legit. Just in terms of like your growth. Obviously, I have your book as well. I'm almost done that. And um really thankful just honestly, because you are the the guy that keeps it real all the time, you know, and that's like, thank um, you, thank you that's very hard, much. That's hard to come by these days. And my question to you, man, is, um and I'm just thinking about stuff here when I actually asked you this on Bitcoin Live, and you mentioned the um, the Binance chart, the BNB chart yeah. that was uh, that was kind of breaking down. Um, at some point, we you talk about like a breakout level, and then I was thinking, is there also like a breakdown level that when uh, price like breaks down, like Bitcoin just broke down below twenty um, twenty five hundred, uh, sorry twenty one five, twenty two five, yeah twenty two five. Are you, is, is the trade happening there? Is the short happening there? Or are you waiting for it to go back up to that level again for you to short it again? Yeah, that's, these are great questions. Um, and, and thank you for the um, feedback from the heart. I appreciate that. So there's times when support is well-defined. There's times when it's not well-defined. And the same as resistance. And we've talked, if you've been a Bitcoin Live member and if you look at, um, if you look at like my commentary right around the end of March and like right after we broke that where we tried to bounce and we hit the MA 200 at 45, 46 and we came or 48 K and we came back below. I talked about how resistance is really well defined, but support is not like there's times when one or the other is really well defined. So that's, I'll say that first, 
where where just given where you are, what act in the play or where you are in terms of, your, of where you are in the channel and momentum in terms of what just happened. Did you just lose support? Did you just break resistance? Sometimes one is more well-defined than the other. Um, I often talk about in Bitcoin Live and not playing in the middle of the channel. So you either want to buy at support or you play and want to, want to um, buy in a breakout if you're going long. And here you were offered the opportunity to go short. We talked about all the negative divergence. We talked about the outside bars. Uh, we talked about how the upper shadow candles have been featured in this channel every time it tried to bounce. You saw that kind of that, that, that kind of nascent, that weakness uh, in the candle body. So if you entered on short, uh, on the outside bars, you entered in just kind of a simple up, up thrust over 25K, you could have done that. And if you didn't, then you were kind of really just waiting for 20, for the 22.5K. And from 22.5, you're either going long at 22.5 or you're shorting when it breaks. So now you're either short from there with a trailing stop loss. And now any bounce, you're looking to fade 22.5, right? Every, if, it, if it bounces up and there are people who bought here are going to sell and opportunistic traders are going to start shorting. And because it should fail at 22.5, if it doesn't, you pay attention, you go long if it breaks bullish, right? It's the same strategy we use time and time right, again. Right. Yeah, uh, you, you you wouldn't believe it. I actually did short at 25 and then it nice. kind of got, yeah, but then I, 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 I've i been cutting a lot of positions early this like last couple of weeks. Yeah. Because if you're not losing, you're not losing, you know? So that's kind of Good. like... Good. Yeah, look, and take, like small take, take size a win. Like, yeah. Take a win. Take yeah. a win. Yeah. Yeah. The, the things that I don't get is like, do you, you know, like, do you set like if you think that's breaking down? Like I was, I was following the OBB uh, bearish diversion, and I couldn't believe that it was happening too. Yeah, it's um, weird. It's weird. Yeah, it was weird, and um, and I was following that, and I said this is gonna break down, and then I, I at that point I don't know if I'm like okay, this is my level, like twenty two five is my level for the breakdown, but I I didn't put like a um, like a short entry there, I I waited for it to break down to then correct. retest there to then enter. Is that the correct thing to do? Yeah, you never trade based off an oscillator. It's just to give yeah. you a little bit of more like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, information. Yeah. It's just price structure. Like it's just mm. based on a horizontal level. That's what you want to do. Thank you, Frankie. It's great to hear from you today. We'll probably take um we'll take just two more speakers. Big the thing about about being able to add a short, you know, at twenty five or you know at twenty four. I mean. We talk a lot about risk versus reward, and we talk a lot about, you know, being able to enter short on the green candle and being able to enter long on the red. And Bitcoin did everything it could uh, to punish, right, early shorters, right? There were three dailies in a row that, you know, were in the high 24, 7 to 9, right? And a lot of people started to enter short positions there. And three days in a row, those positions that were, you know, in the money intraday after they initially hit uh, were basically tested again. And you were pressuring those early shorters that were trying to short on the clear lack of momentum and the triple bearish divergence you pointed out and a bunch of other factors. And it was only that last, you know, up thrust that created that higher high max pain right it was max pain for if you're trying to short bitcoin puts in a higher high the highest price action uh in two months and that very tippity top right was the ideal perfect short entry and it was so small and narrow of a window and then that move was like a, like a what a four thousand dollar move i mean it would be huge trade such a short amount of time that's a beautiful trade but they they they, they only it took it took max pain and max balls to take that trade because of the the price action that broke a lot of p people's ideal lines in the sand that represented okay it's bullish or okay it's bearish and that's why the market you know does an amazing job of making fools of both sides of the people right or something along those lines. So listen, we're wrapping it up. We have two. We just a few more here. Thank you for listening. It's getting late. This is going for over two hours. I'm Big Cheds. That's Big Chonus. Uh, we're so happy to have you uh, listening, coming together, worldwide phenomenon. Uh, Moon Patrol, what would you like to say? Moon Patrol, it's your time to shine. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yo. Does that mean yes? Yes, sir. We can hear All you. All right. Hey, Cheds, uh, I'm the guy that's sent you a few photos over the last year 
me drinking a glass of wine at my mom's house in Connecticut by the, I don't know if you remember that one, another one on the beach, both times with your book on oh, that that's guy. that's so nice of you. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> now you match the face or the digital face. Anyway, yeah, look, so I've been at this now for over a year and really following you guys, and I'm a big fan. Um, and, you know, I'm getting to the point where my I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at getting a good entry, okay? But... Uh, you know, that's just the beginning, I feel. The, you know, planning out the trade and knowing when to scale out and how to build a position throughout, you know, Jonas was just talking about it. Um, you know, any any tricks or tips you can give on, on how you go about that? I know every trade is different, but there's clearly a, there must be some sort of method that you use when you look at an idea and how you build a position to continue scaling into it and how to continue scaling out of it. I think it's a great topic. And I think for me, um, it comes down to like, how much am I reaching? How much I, is this a really obvious trade idea? Cause like the more obvious it is, the easier it is to trade. Right. And that's based on how well, like a level is defined. You know, if you look at that Ethereum breakout trade from 1290, I mean, that's pretty easy. That's a pretty easy trade, um, which is, you know, it's an ascending triangle reversal. It bumped up against it a bunch of times, then it broke out. So you just go long above or below, and, you know, and then there's other, then there's the other trades. So it's like a lot of the time, you're, you know, are we forcing it? Are we not forcing it? If it's a really obvious trade, it makes it easier to manage. You can add to it if, if you want, or you can move your stop loss up. You can go even go heavy. If it's a really obvious trade, um, I think it just depends. It's all about trade selection. And I think that's kind of the root, my answer really, to how I would start to address that topic. What about you, Jonas? Yeah, risk versus reward comes to mind. You know, again, talking about trying to buy the red candle. It's like, you know, how many people were looking for the ideal short, right? And then they see this big red candle on today's price action. Like, like that trade has already happened. You know, if you wanted to short Bitcoin, like that trade is over. We we're, we're still in this weak little weekly equilibrium. Uh, there was lots of running room to basically play on that. We just happened to basically take a lot of that over the past several days. Um, but it's about risk versus reward. So right now, there's no real clear setup in Bitcoin. We're back to the low twenties. You know, I guess there's meaningful support around twenty k. And we now know there's mega meaningful resistance at 25 and no real intent to buy anywhere between 24, 23 and 22 right now. So um, I just feel the only thing the market currently has going for it is this Ethereum thing, whatever that is, but it's probably sooner than later. And once that's over, um, I, I just think there's um, there's so many other things that have yet to be. Uh, quantified and and contained, uh, you know, the three arrows and the stuff, that ain't over yet. I don't think that's over yet. So there's such a headwind still. And the overall stock market is still to be held up by Apple and Microsoft and a a few others right now. And um, we we know we are now in a a regime of not a, 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 a commentative Fed. And I think all that basically plays into the whole investor risk on risk off appetite i still feel we are heading into a much more risk off environment all right thank you so much Ru- uh, ruari what would you like to say ruari, hey big chance yep hey big chance uh, big fan quick question just a bit market ma- manipulation um is it who, who drives it is it controlled is there a consortium is it, <laughs> i mean you know, come on There's yeah no, who knows i mean i mean um uh, there's the council of Elrond. I mean, there's what is uh, going us? Yeah, the Jedi Council. I mean, yes, there are um, people that have a lot of Bitcoin, um, and there are people that know how to uh, trade that on exchanges. And now there's a lot of derivative products, right, um, that can be traded, uh, you know, based on the price of Bitcoin futures, exchanges, all those kind of things. Um, I think the, the, the main thing that, that you want to 
focus on now is what sets you up for the best risk reward heading into the future. Um, we know that Bitcoin basically did a 3x, 3x from its highs of 2017. We have coins this cycle that did 100x, 200x, 300x or more, uh, or even like 50x, which is significantly more than their previous highs of, uh, or they were just new. So I said before, um, there's a, a better possibility some of the big, the bigger wins of the next bull uh, cycle are coins and uh, Chad's favorite word projects that haven't been you know invented yet. That being said, you have to ask yourself what makes the most sense, and also you had to weigh that was what's going to be around in the years to 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 come. There's so many um, S coins out there and so much money in them, and I still feel a lot of that has to get flushed out. And in the end, you know, it probably should be Bitcoin and, and some handful of others uh, that should warrant um, the most investment in the future. Uh, but what that future is for crypto is still up in the air now. A lot of people got hurt pretty badly and a lot of big money did this time. And we'll see how that, uh, you know, plays in the overall Bitcoin ecosystem heading into year's end. Whatever that future is, I hope you are part of it with us. Every one of you listening here today on a Friday, it's August 19th, 2022. I am Big Cheds. That's the one and only Big Chonis who decided to join us here today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for stepping up and contributing. We got through to pretty much just about everyone. I know there's a couple more. We'll get to you next time if I did not get to you. But that's all we got. That's all we wrote, folks. Um, Find my book. It's on Amazon. There's four formats. You can get it for free on my YouTube channel at Sheds Trading. Um, please consider joining Bitcoin Live. Part of, I'm one, part of a world-class team where uh, twice a week I perform a full market update. I've been doing that for four years, something I'm really proud of. Um, but, you know, more than that, just thank you for joining. Thank you for joining the spaces. It was great to have you here today. Jonas, do you want to just say goodbye to our folks before we wrap up? Yeah, Chad, it was another amazing conversation with you again. I do appreciate it. And, you know, just hearing a lot of the, uh, the callers and, and just uh, a lot of their, their stories, there's a lot of similarities, you know, uh, people that are new to Bitcoin and crypto, people that have been here for a while. And, and overall, a lot of the same frustrations about, you know, feeling they were making a smart choice or a smart investment, um, you know, only to, to be disappointed and stuff and listen this is what happens unfortunately uh during bear market cycles we are not in the environment we were a year ago and that's clearly obvious and it's it's taken a lot of people down with it i think um like like years past um people that are able to learn from these experiences and uh become better traders are able to kind of come out of this uh, on the other for what can happen next. And I, I think, and this is a very uh, bullish statement that I'm about to make. Um, there's a lot of money in this market and in this eco system now, a, a substantial amount more than w- was in 2018 and 2019. And I think that means something. I think we can still have a vicious bear market, uh, but I think the intent uh, of investable, um, you know, <laughs> uh, coins, projects, I don't know. It's not investable, but like tradable uh, and, and and the ability to ride future hype cycles uh, is definitely apparent. And I think if you're patient and smart and, uh, you know, pick your battles, um, there's lots of opportunity and will continue to be so. Um, this might be harder to find them in this contiguous environment, and uh, there's nothing wrong with basically just sitting in your hands and waiting for, uh, you know, times where uh, the extremes seem to be feeling on both ends, you know, peak euphoria. I almost feel like we felt that last week. And look how quickly that can turn on a dime. Um, so I'm excited and I'm in, uh, proud to have these conversations with you. And uh, please, uh, if you want to, guys, check out my super fall and, uh, seeing if there's uh, any kind of demand for it. But if you want to support the channel, uh, I would do appreciate that. Thanks, Ed. That's fantastic. Check out that super follow for Big Chonus where he puts out exclusive content, uh, chart ideas, market ideas. Reach out to him for more information. He's a, he's a good dude. And um, 
we, we've done YouTube channels together, YouTube videos together. We've done these spaces. And um, so thank you for joining me, Big Jonas. And thank you for joining me, everybody else. I'm Big Chad. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off now. But um, I hope everybody is doing well. And I will talk to you soon. Big Chad's out. All right. Thank you, folks. Appreciate you listening. And that was a great replay. I have one more to post. I'll um, maybe do it tonight, depending on what's going on, just to kind of get it uploaded. But that was an awesome, awesome conversation. Folks, thank you very much. Really happy to have you watching live and listening. Um, until next time, Big Cheds out.